This week on Grid Life Digest, Emma asks us about our guilty pleasures. We compare what matters most to us in games, ponder where we would live if forcibly exiled, and reflect on our proudest accomplishments so far next. <laughs> Welcome to the November 1st edition of Grid Life Digest, the weekly culture and gaming podcast and the number one Tinky Winky podcast. My name is Noah Frescop, and joining me this week is the future keeper of the Holocron, Emma Myers. What's up, guys? The MILF man, Micah Benfett. Hey there. And the one and only, Plat Matt Kuklinski. How's it going? Every Wednesday, each of us uses a topic for conversation, and we recommend a piece of media for the group and audience to check out. You can get this show on iTunes, YouTube, and now Google Play every Wednesday, and be sure to check out gridlifedigest.com to see all the content in one place. And while you're at it, follow us on all of our social media platforms, at Grid Life Digest on Twitter and at Grid Life Digest Pod on Facebook and Instagram so you never miss what's happening. Some few announcements. We did not record last week as we wanted to release Volume 1 of the show, which highlights our favorite moments from the first 10 episodes in an easily shareable format. Thank you, Eli, for putting that together. In addition, Micah put up a great ironic unboxing video on our YouTube channel for his new Switch. I would warn you, though, this product contains intentional cringe by the bucket load. And looking toward the future, we will be doing a several-part Grid Life Love Letters run detailing our passion for each of the various genres in the Super Mario series, culminating in a review of the newly released Super Mario Odyssey. Look out for more details on our social medias. And seeing as we pass the dreaded and beloved October 27th, a.k.a. the Day of Wallet Reckoning, what have you guys been playing? I've been playing South Park, The Stick of Truth. Very nice. And you finished because, it, right? Yeah, I finished it. It was um, I bought it because I wanted something new to play, and you know the fractured but whole came out, and you and Eli both got it. So I was like, you know what? I want to be part of this, you know, conversation. So I got the game. Uh, I didn't pre-order it, but I still got the code for the Stick of Truth. I finally had some free time this weekend. I went ham, dude. That game, <laughs> I, like, I really, really enjoyed it. It was really good. How long did it take you to get through it? I'm curious. Um, it took me about 13 to 15 hours. Like, I would say probably like 13 or 14. Uh, I spent a little like more time, you know, to get some like trophies. Like, uh, I, like I'm planning on platinuming this game because I liked it that much. Oh wow! So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like go back and do some stuff I, like 58 percent of the trophies i um, kind of like sped run it a little bit because i was like i waited way too long to play it um because fracture was coming out and so i i still need to mop up a few of the side quests i don't know if i'll get to it um what was your favorite uh like dungeon part uh, you mean like like favorite like main quest? Yeah, like main quest like Basically. section. Yeah. Um, Spoilers. I don't know. There were there were a lot of great ones. Like the uh, the alien level was pretty cool. <laughs> so it's so funny. Um, the the levels where you go inside the school are pretty cool. Um, what what else was there? There's the abortion clinic. Yeah, and then there's that. That was that was pretty funny. That might be my bet. There was Canada, which turns into like an SNES yeah, the, RPG. The Canada section was so funny. It's like, so I funny. I didn't expect that at all. And then uh, there's the the part where you go up the gay man's butthole to see all the oh yeah just yeah the inner workings of that <laughs> wonderful artwork. Um, what else is there? And then yeah, there's like the the final like showdown with everyone. And then who yeah, did you so who did you the, pick between uh, Eric and uh did you pick the humans or the elves? Oh, I chose the humans because like in the beginning of the game that's who you side with. So you know, I had to be loyal to my boys, you know. I respect that. Cartman's an asshole though, so I betrayed him and then they just came, yeah. they came together. I mean I, I like I have to load up a previous save and then like betray him in order to get like one trophy. So I'm going to do that. There's a trophy for defeating Cartman. 
Yeah, Carmen's like borderline overpowered in the end. Like he's like yeah. the only reason I got through Canada because I was under leveled so much. He he just oh decimated. really yeah he just yeah I just because I didn't do a lot of the side quests I was it was pretty hard oh, toward the end and uh, Carmen was, just decimates. I, was, I did like I was doing all the side quests that you know I could do, and so I was over leveled I guess or leveled but like I never really like lost a battle. I mean every now and then yeah but like my character was so overpowered I had like friends, uh. All my abilities were like powered up to the max. Oh wow! All, like my, my my two best abilities. Wait, what what class did you play as? I was the rogue or a thief or whatever, just because that's generally what I gravitate towards. The rogue. Yeah. Because I was playing as myself in the game, so I was like, "This is what I like." Yeah. So, yeah. The Jew class, because I thought you know it would be funny, and uh, there was there was like a trophy where if you if you meet Jesus when you're playing the Jew, you know, there's a trophy for that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this class out. And, uh, you know, some like his abilities later on that you unlock are really like overpowered. So I don't know if like, I just had like a really good class, but yeah, like the game, it, not, not, not a very difficult game unless, unless you turn up the difficulty, which I didn't do. It's not hard unless you just speedrun it like me and yeah. then point yourself into a corner. Yeah, I figured the Jew class would be funny for approximately 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, if it's overpowered, yeah. that's kind of funny because I, I don't think they expected many people to <laughs> actually choose it. So, like, let's put all the most powerful abilities in here. But yeah, it's a great game. Yeah. We'll have to have Eli talk about it as well. Um, anything else? I've been playing a little bit of it. Like I, I got a little bit further. Nice. Still, still have a ways to go. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for me. How about you, Emma? Um. Well, I have been playing a lot of Coder the past couple days. That's right. Um. Since it was recently made backwards compatible, um, on Xbox One, so. I made sure to bring my Xbox copy with me because I knew it would be coming soon. Um, Foretold. I've been right. I've been playing it for about three days now. I'm about 17, 18 hours in, um, but I'm doing a like 100% max light side playthrough. So I'm just really taking my time with it again. It's been a while. I I don't want to say I forgot how much I love this game because like <laughs> I always talk about it, but just playing it, I just like. I come across these things that I had totally forgotten about, and it, and I'm just like, damn, this is the best video game ever made. <laughs> I it's honestly up there. Like I can't really refute you with that. It's real good. It's real good. Um, yeah, I always go dark side though. I know that's like not the right thing. It just feels right for the story, and it's like super fucked up at the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great game. You have yeah. If you ever play this game, like, I highly suggest playing it the. Like, just when you first play it, play it how you want to play it. Um, the first time I ever played it, I played it a dark side. And the ending kills me every time. So fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, but now whenever I play it, um, I always play how it's technically meant, supposed to be played. So male character aligned to the light side. Just because you get more out of the game that way, story element wise, so yeah, that's how they planned. That's I think. my my personal favorite ending. But yeah, first time you play it, like play it how you want, because it's a doozy for sure. But definitely try to like invest your skills into one or the other if you can, because if you're spread, if you're spread, like if you're a master or if you're a jack of all trades, master of none, you might have some issues toward the end. Some of those boss oh, fights yeah. are rough. Uh, yeah, great game, great game. Thanks, Phil Spencer. Appreciate it. Um, anything else? Not for me. All right, Micah, what are you doing? Um, so I've been playing this little, little little game called Mario Odyssey. Might have heard of it. Uh, yeah, I might have heard of it once or twice. Um, but yeah, it's it's a Mario. It's a new Mario game. I, I, I was it the last Mario game I played? I think it was Super Mario 3D Land. Yep. On the 3DS. Same. And that game was amazing. Like. I don't know everything about that game. It was it was pretty dope. It was you know, two D and three D, 
kind of, I don't know, what was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of like, it was like, it wasn't like 64 or Sunshine or Galaxy where you're like exploring big areas. It's kinda uh, like, it was very obstacle course based and I really liked that. And I guess 3D World was even yeah. better. I never played it. I didn't have a Wii U. Um, that's one I'd love to go back and play. Um, mm-hmm. 3D Land? Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it was. One of my very first but 3DS games. Anyway. Mm-hmm. But anyways, yeah, Mario Odyssey, it just does something totally different than no other Mario game has done. I mean, it has a possession mechanic. So, you know, you take your hat, you throw it at a Goomba. Now you're a Goomba. Now you're a Goomba. You can jump on other Goombas, and you're a taller stack of Goombas. And then you can was it, you can walk up to one of these, like, lady Goombas, and they'll, like, fall in love with you, and then they'll throw out a moon. It's like, oh, oh no that, way. that's neat. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, it's very funny. early. Very <laughs> early. It's like I can already tell it's something special though. Like even like as early uh, as I am, like this game is fantastic. Um Oh yeah. Can't say enough like, good stuff about it. I can it. I I can already tell like for me it's it it's it's got to be game of the year already. Even I mean, I guess I've played a lot of it. Maybe like 7 hours I've played. Like okay. this morning I I I got up at like 5 and I played it like until 10 that's awesome like in, in the morning i know I was when's like, the last I time you've done I'm, that never i don't i don't like remember set the last aside time, time for that. gaming exactly like because you know i was so used to getting up for work i'm like okay what do i do okay i'm gonna play a game so obviously it's gonna be mario odyssey but it's been a while since a game has hooked me like this i mean i guess uncharted the lost legacy hooked me but like this really got me. Like it put its hooks into it's me. Just it's just like, like a shot in the arm. Just like every time you get a move, yeah. it's like just yes. <laughs> exactly. Like it's just a little shot of dopamine right right into your your arm. Like okay, let, let's let's do some more. Like, I mean, that's that's just, the just most one more moon. Part of that game. Just yeah. one more moon. I'll just like, get one more moon. I, I gotta find every single fucking moon yeah. in this in this world. I just have to. Just ravenous for them. Yeah, and then. Then you can also buy all sorts of costumes. Um, like the one I'm rocking is the when you get in New Donk City. So it's like, oh, you look like a businessman, like in the 50s or so. Sounds like, great. Like you basically look like you're an LA noir. Like that, that's what that place looks like. Like it just has those vibes. It's pretty sick. I'm I'm still saving up for the swim or the boxer shorts because it's like a thousand. It's like a thousand coins for him to take his pants off. It's, it's a little, it's a I'm still much. wrapping my head around that. Yeah, it's like, well, what makes those worth a thousand dollars? I mean, his Mario nipples. without his pants is in high demand. So it really is. <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah, there's so many good costumes. He's also like a pirate coat. He has like samurai armor. I saw like there's so many random things in like the Luigi Mario or Wario, uh, Waluigi, and then the NES Mario like color scheme. Like there's so many outfits, and I love that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna be hunting those purple coins for forever basically mm, forever and then i noticed with the purple coins they uh they don't transfer over to worlds yeah so, like each world has its own specific set of purple coins you have to which hunt I, for yeah. very specific ones yeah well, which i found really interesting and uh going back to like the possession mechanic like in the beginning you, you get to fucking play as a t-rex like right off the bat it's that's so the best cool thing ever I was just like, oh, oh man, man, I can't wait to be a T-Rex. Oh shit, that's a T-Rex right there. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can do be it. A <laughs> I, I love how people are like trying to say that oh, that's a uh, Yoshi. Or, yeah, yeah, you know, these <laughs> HD graphics. <laughs> I mean, it, it's possible, but no, no. Where, I, 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 I'd like to know where the Yoshi is in all of this. Where does he fit yeah. in the wider Maybe narrative? Maybe pop, pops up somewhere. He's in the Maybe. timeline that Yoshi doesn't exist. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, the the convoluted Mario timeline. And have you played any of the the 2D parts? Yeah. Like, what, yeah, they feel great. What do you think of that? They feel yeah. really good. Like, just the phys- like Super Mario Brothers 1, like, still feels great to this day to play. And it's even more exaggerated in, in Odyssey. And I like how whatever outfit you're wearing, like, it shows up in the 8-bit version of Mario. Like, you can have, oh, like, yeah. the boxer shorts on and he's, like, naked. So they had to do all that sprite work, which is cool. Um, yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I need to, I'm going to play a lot more. I mean, I love how much they they put it in there. Like, it's in there quite a bit. I thought it was yeah. just gonna be like here and there, but no, it's 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 there for a good chunk of the game. And I look forward to it too, because because it, it just yeah, feels so good. Exactly. Like, 
it, it's like you're changing the gameplay mechanics totally, but it's it's still Mario and it's keeps it's it fresh. Awesome. Keeps yeah, it fresh, yeah. But that's what I love about it. It's like, oh, I'm like playing a game inside of a game right now. Whoa, what is this? <laughs> Mario <Mind> Inception. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> um, anything else? Um, no, that's that. Well, actually, since the last time I was on, I bought Mario Kart specifically so I could play with my siblings while I went camping, and that that was like one of the best times I ever had. It's was play fantastic. Was play it is. It's it's a really fantastic game, and I swear that was like one of the best experiences I like ever had. Like gaming with like my siblings like my little sister and i she's 10 and i'm 20 and we were, we were playing it like i don't know t- till however late at night and it was a great time and on a camping like, trip I, yeah on a camping trip Did why not so you, you, you pulled a karen what's I a mean, karen that's when you take your switch uh, to like social events or places where you don't typically play games Oh, yeah, it's okay. like a it's like a meme from the uh, Switch like announcement video. Yeah, you'd, like, you'd oh, recognize her. The woman, you'd absolutely woman. recognize <laughs> yeah, her. Yeah, or the woman <laughs> Switch at like like uh, like a party or something. It's like uh-huh. don't be Karen. It's a lot of people say it's yeah. like, oh, well, I'm the, gonna the... go to this party and drink. <laughs> oh, I have a Switch. I'm gonna yeah. play my Switch. It wasn't that bad. It was no. like right before we go to bed. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously though, Switch and camping sounds great. Yeah, it was oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like prop up a chair by like a, like a river or something and just play Switch. That sounds that sounds fucking awesome. Um, yeah, you know Mario, then... Mario Kart so good. I didn't play it on Wii U, so it's it was an all new experience for me. Ten out of ten. Yeah. It's my favorite. Same here. It, oh man, it, it's so great. It just the game play, they just nailed it, and, and then... it just feels right. And they they have all the cool parts of Double Dash, which is like you can uh-huh. have the double items, but then it doesn't have the stupid overpowered like character specific ones. So you get kind of oh, yeah. old worlds. Man, it's so good. Exactly. We need to play sometime. I'm down whenever. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm down and whenever. I, well, one thing I'd like to point out is how they nerfed the the blue shells. Like they threw in the what's it called? Like kind of like a boombox thing. Oh yeah, you press yeah. It you can like deflect stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love that they put it in there because before you couldn't do anything about a blue shell. Like yeah. oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> You're just like That's looking it. into the light already. It's like oh no, I just have to yeah. wait for my you, death. You just, yeah, you just see it like, oh, uh, it's it's gonna get me no matter what. Like you think you can go faster and get away from it, but no. no. But now that now they threw in that item, and I love that they did. <laughs> so you can never outrun it. Yeah, you still have to be pretty yeah. particular with the timing, but if you can get it right, yeah, exactly. you can you can deflect it pretty well. And same goes with like other shells and whatever uh-huh. other projectiles that are thrown at you. Yeah, so fucking love with, Mario Kart Eight. Yeah, it works with all like throwable objects almost. Yeah, I think. I didn't know what it was at first. Yeah. I was like, what is this? And then I like, t- you know, toss it in like, oh, okay, this is actually really, really useful, especially when you're in first place and everyone's attacking you at once. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, those are the games I played. <laughs> Excellent. So I played a shit ton this week. Um, just tried to wrap a bunch of stuff before the, the 27th hit. Um, so I finally, bef- the night before Odyssey dropped, I finally beat Breath of the Wild. And Damn. I put around 65 hours, I think, and I was like, you know what? It's time. Ganon needs to get his ass kicked. And, <laughs> man, the last, like, two hours of that game, just, like, assaulting the castle and, like, all the music playing and everything's happening, I was like, this is, this is fucking awesome. Like, this is seriously, like, a 10 out of 10 moment. And then, you know, you do everything, you beat the boss, spoilers, you fight Ganon. Like, and then, and then it just kind of, I don't know, it just felt very underwhelming to me and it's a great game and i i understand why people love it so much but i still don't quite hold it to the esteem that many do i think has a lot of problems um it's a great what what are the problems for me a big issue with breath of the wild was the aesthetic variety and because while the overworld itself was really diverse the like the shrines and the dungeons the, the the divine beasts they all look the same Like, they all have the same aesthetic to them. And that's something the older Zelda games really excelled at. It was making each individual dungeon look unique and feel unique. And it just felt like one giant dungeon. Like, the four Divine Beasts felt like four parts of one dungeon to me. Like, they didn't really have any mechanics that separated them besides how you enter them and then how you overcome the the shape of them and navigate them. Like, they all felt like this. They all felt very samey to me. And I love the shrines. I love how small they are. 
like I said, they could have taken more liberties with the aesthetic of them to kind of make them feel more unique and really mm-hmm. make them fit in the area of the world that they're in. Because like no matter what shrine you go into, they all look the same. And I think that it was it really took me out of it. Um, gameplay wise, they're all great. I, there was only a couple of shrines I didn't really like. Um, I even like the combat ones, which seems to be a, a like a topic of contention. But you know, Breath of the Wild still a great game. If I had to give it like a number score, which I hate doing because I hate number scores, I'd still give it like a nine. Like it's it's fantastic. Like what it does for open world design, just it's incredible. But yeah, I just can't I can't put it on the the pedestal that a lot of people do. And then since we recorded last, I probably beat Stick of Truth because um, it's been a while now. And then started Fractured. Haven't got very far. Just initial impression, just it just did not feel as strong as Stick of Truth. Maybe it's just because I had lowered expectations for Stick of Truth. Um, I don't know. But it already made me laugh like five, six, seven times. So it's like, it's still great. But it just didn't grab me as much as Stick of Truth did. And I just feel like the fantasy setting just really fit with that kind of gameplay. I, lo- I, li- I love superheroes and I like the whole, like the, the satire that they have around them. Like they're making like their own franchises or whatever. And they have like the list of like phase one, phase two, phase three. And they, they follow like, you know, this character, this character, you know, uh, team up, Netflix special. Like, they do all, like, they're just, it's a whole <laughs> big commentary on, you know, the mass yeah. superhero culture we have right now. And it's great. I need to get back to it. It just wasn't grab me in the moment. And then. Wait, I'm, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, so, fine. like, why is it called, like, Fractured Butthole? So, um, I don't, I mean, I assume it's just because, you know, the group is very, like, spread out and they have to, like, come together again. I don't really know. Um, okay. Yeah. I again, I'm like literally just in the first area. I can't even go outside like the the confines okay. of hit the street that the new kid lives on, and I I hate it that I can't make my character look the same as he did in the first one because oh, I no. wanted continuity. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have, especially because I was being myself. So I I wanted continuity. And he looks terrible. It's like the glasses that they have in the game are shit. They like they look so <laughs> terrible, and he looked perfect in it the first one. It would have been cool. It would have been cool if if the game was like, I mean, like is it is it like a direct sequel? Like, do it they is. make references to Stick of? Oh, okay. Yep, it is. It well, takes place literally well, they, after Stick of Truth. Oh well, that, that's weird then that they wouldn't have like the same options like for your character, you know? It was also developed by two different studios. So Stick of Truth oh, was okay. developed by Obsidian, who's like just god tier in RPGs, and then this one is the I believe the first game made by. Ubisoft San Francisco. So totally different assets, even though it looks very similar. And the character creator, yeah, is totally different. So, I mean, I can imagine that with all the turmoil that Sick of Truth went through from getting it released, like, they just had to start over and make their own assets. So I get it, but it's just a little frustrating from an aesthetic point of view. Aesthetic is really important to me. Um, it really is just nitpick, though. Because I am just I just made my character, I gave a mask, and then it didn't even matter. So... And the combat system's cool. I just really grew to love the combat system and sick of truth. So I'm still just trying to adjust to the changes. And what 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 are the major changes? So it plays kind of like a fire emblem almost, where you're kind of on a grid and you can move around freely within a little area instead of being fixed to one's position and then going back and forth turn based. It's a lot more about positioning and like combining different powers. Uh, it's interesting. I'd have to get more into it. It's again, people are saying this one's pretty easy too. I might you know, take my, take my time more with this one and, you know, not be under leveled this time. Uh, you know, it's, it's really good. I just, I need to give it more time. It's just that Mario hit and Wolfenstein hit and it's just a flood. And then what else? So in light of, I'm still trying to think cause we haven't recorded in a while. So in light of the news that visceral close, I picked up, um, I started another playthrough of dead space just to kind of for historical context. And just oh, wow. For what are you playing that spooky. on? Spooky. Uh, PS3, because oh, the PC port of those games are terrible, and, like, uh, using a mouse on it is a nightmare, even though that's how I would have preferred to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I just, they were they were on sale for super cheap on PS3 during, like, the Halloween sale or whatever. Um, and by the time this release, we have already had Halloween, so happy Halloween. Um, you know, it's still great. Like, that's still one of the all-time great survival horror games. Um won't go too much in detail on that. Everyone knows Dead Space. Uh, a little bit more Red Dead. And yeah, and then today, I just spent like literally five hours playing Wolfenstein the New Colossus. And I cannot yeah. sp- I cannot speak highly enough of that game. 
it, <laughs> it I had high expectations for it already, and it it leaped over them. From a storage perspective, from a level design perspective, it is one of the best shooters I've ever played, and I've played a lot of shooters. Um, yeah, it just it has the story is so much more emotional and disturbing and touching and funny and than it ever ever should have been for Wolfenstein. It's like you look at the first games, it's like, all right, so Escape from Castle Wolfenstein, like you're just you're it's basically one of the first stealth games, you're just, you know, evading Nazis. And then Wolfenstein three D, you're just blindly going around shooting Nazis and then, you know, iteration after iteration, they finally hit the sweet spot. It still has the satisfying stealth from the New Order. It still has the options to, you know, kind of play how you want. But instead, the how, the leveling system, it feels a lot more organic and kind of rewards your own play style instead of having instead of you having to go out of your way to do certain tasks to level up your skills. Because uh, uh-huh. it felt like really inorganic. And this time it was like, all right, I'm doing tasks that I would want to be doing all the time. So I'm being rewarded for that. And it feels great. And like I said, just the story is incredible. Like I just, it's genuinely disturbing at parts. It's genuinely touching and heartwarming at parts. It's funny. It's just, it's the whole spectrum, and it still has that like underlying level of tongue and cheek ridiculousness that Wolfenstein has to have. And I don't know how it doesn't collapse under it. Like, how does it stay consistent with its tone so well despite being so varied? Like, it's it's incredible. I don't know what I don't know what's in the water over at Machine Games, but they're doing good stuff. I'm going to do a full, formal kind of IGN-style review. I'm recording footage. I'm going to write it up. I uh, should have that up on the channel as soon as humanly possible. I can try to get this game done. Sweet. Yeah, I, I just so, feel really passionate about it. I want to spread my thoughts further. So I have a question I have a question about the story. Yeah. Like, so in, in light of, like, all, you know, the racism going on in America, is is it kind of like a social commentary? Like on what's going on now. It's more about or what's like, going you know, on in history. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Like the marketing absolutely stole the commentary on now and it was awesome. Okay. Like it yeah, has probably what... some of the best marketing I've ever seen. Uh huh. Cause yeah. wasn't there some marketing where it was like fuck Nazis or something? Yeah, it's like and... hashtag no more Nazis and like stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Like... And then the like, Pete Hines more. interview. <laughs> the Pete Hines interview where he's like where the interview was like, don't you, don't, aren't you like, you know, like rattling the cage a little bit? He's like, yeah. He's like, aren't you, <laughs> aren't, aren't you afraid? Like, you know, like you're going to burst the hornet's nest or whatever. He's like, yeah, well the hornet's nest full of Nazis. So fuck those guys. Like they've just been so unabashedly just like, you know, hashtag no more Nazis, like, you know, make America Nazi free again, just stuff like that. Like the marketing is so good. And then the game is even better. And yeah, it's mo- mostly social commentary on the time. Like it takes place in 1961. So obviously there's, a lot of racial division still and even more exaggerated since you know nazi germany has invaded the world pretty much and man just the story is so good i i don't want to say anything about it because there's so much to you know dive into for yourself so that's probably where i'll start it buy wolfenstein 2 if you want to support single player games buy wolfenstein 2 it's fantastic um so now we can probably get into topics Let's Probably. see. Let's see. Emma, what's your topic? I want to know your guys' guilty pleasures. Oh, God. That's um, a good topic. For me, it's kind of weird because I'm very, like, open mm-hmm. about things. Like, if I like something, you know, no matter what it is, like, I don't mind being like, yeah, I freaking love this. So, like, there's nothing that I'm necessarily, like, ashamed that I like because I just kind of own it. But yeah. um, one thing that I very much enjoy that nobody else that I've ever met does um, and they tell me that it should be a guilty pleasure. <laughs> um, but um, I thoroughly enjoy listening to Kids Bop. That is really the tentpole definition of a guilty pleasure right there. What? Like I thought you I... ironically liked them. I didn't, wow. I, 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 I do, but it's like, in no, by no means do I think it's good, okay? Like, it is not good. <laughs> but I, for some reason, I love listening to Kids Bop. I just think it's, like, really funny. And because I'm such a music snob, and it's just, like, 
hearing like all these songs that I love like sung by these kids like <laughs> there's some <laughs> I just love it so much like the first kids bop album if you've not listened to it it is a gem it is a it is a force to be reckoned with let me tell you let's look at the set list on this motherfucker Keep yeah going. it's got I'm blue it's I'm got all go. star <laughs> no <got>. no really <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm listening to this one. I'm so we're like done. late late nineties. It's got all the small things. Yes, late nineties. Oh god. Um, oh, all the man, small things. Got me. Kids Bop is. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm definitely amazing. gonna have to check this out. <laughs> Their the rendition of that. Nickelback's photograph. No. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, the first like ten or so. Like, if you listen to modern day kids bop, it's all kids singing, you know? Yeah. But the first, like, 10 or so albums, it's like this older guy with a very raspy voice and this, like, random chick that are, like, obviously, like, they're trying too hard to be taken seriously. So they're just like, yeah, let's do kids bop, (laughs) you know? But yeah, I mean, like, Oh yeah, some of my personal favorites, um, all the small things, photograph, um, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Oh, no way! <laughs> I, I need to hear these. Um, they they do that. I'm in love with the cocoa, and oh, it's no. the really? most hysterical oh, no. thing. Oh no! It's about chocolate milk. It's this kid of screaming about chocolate milk. <laughs> oh, it is fantastic. Like, I'm telling you, um, I love Kids Bob. I actually, I was going to see them. They're coming to Tulsa in November. Them. And I was going to go see them in concert. It's the Kids Bob organization. <laughs> but the tickets were a little more than I <laughs> ever intend to pay to see Kids Bob. So I'll have to see How them next year. How much were they? Yeah, we need to know. Tickets were like 30 something dollars, but that was... Um, you know before fees and everything and i'm not paying like 40 something dollars to see kids bop it doesn't matter how good your version of photograph is but i got like coupons in the mail i don't know how but like i got emailed like um coupons for the kids bop concert and like so i could have gone for like 18 bucks or so um but it's in tulsa and that's like 45 minutes to an hour away so i'll definitely see him next year for sure you, you gotta go you gotta just give us the inside scoop like what would that even look i just like? want a concert like i just want a t-shirt i gotta vlog the experience like i went to a kids it'll happen. concert in all caps with exclamation point. <laughs> like i can i can see the the branding right now so this thing has 30 songs on it like these are substantial pieces of kids content. Bop releases like two to three albums a year like in 2016, yeah, they released like seven albums in 2016 I'm, alone. I, I just Googled Kids Bop and I'm looking at all the different albums and there's a Kids Bop 36. It's like, yeah, I think what, 37 what, 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 came out. When are they going to stop? I'm just, I'm just <laughs> waiting for Kids Bop Never. 69. Personally. Yeah. Like they, can just, they can just stop there. they peaked. Yeah. I need to hear All Star though. Like, I'm an All Star enthusiast. So I need to I need to get on this. No, yeah. I can't believe I never did this before, but I'm totally going to like just start playing Kids Bop in my car to troll my friends now. <laughs> what have you done, Emma? <laughs> I'm telling you, like I hope that you too will appreciate like the amazingness that is Kids Bop. <laughs> Oh yeah, I definitely will. But instead of appreciate the amazingness, I'm probably just gonna like start laughing my ass off. Just a little bright, you know, brighten your day a little bit with some kids bop. Yeah, yeah. So can you name any of the like the kids bop kids? Like Heck that, right? no. How many kids have they gone through? <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. Right. Is there a recruitment process? Is there like a like a list of kids that they hire? Like, how does this all go down? I've bop. only ever owned one Kids Bop album, <laughs> and that was when I was younger, and I had the Kids Bop 10 CD, which is still a banger. Um, banger. Saying it here. It's Kids Bop 10. 
certified banger. When I listen, when I listen to Kids Bop Ten, like it, it's so nostalgic. They got some good songs on there. It's on Spotify, so, everybody. So oh it's, yeah, it's, it's every, right there in front of you. You can get every single Kids Bop album on Spotify. Kids Bop sings the Beatles. Kids Bop goes country. No, I mean no. Oh, God. <laughs> Is there just what? a dedicated Smash Mouth album? I don't think so, but Dang that it. better happen. Dang it. I feel like it's too late for that. Like, it would have happened by now. However, if you YouTube Kids Bop Rap God. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's great. That's all I'll tell you is it's it's pretty great. Is that real? I thought that was fake. It is fake. It is fake, but it's it's fantastic. It's okay, so nonetheless. So, so I. I, I, I'm going to say something real quick. So I, I, I Googled if there were any stars that came out of Kids Bop. <laughs> and I guess there was. So uh, Ro- Ross, Ross Lynch. I have no idea He who was that on is. Kids Bop? No yeah. way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I have no idea who this person is. It, neither do I. But okay. He, I, was I do. On, he was on the Disney, he was on, like, Channel, Disney show, Channel show, Austin and Allie. Yeah. Oh. yeah and it was and a pretty good like, show. He's in the band um, R5 with, like, his brothers and stuff. They're, I mean, they're a pretty popular band. But, yeah, like, he got his big break through Disney Channel. So if you weren't watching Disney Channel, you, you're probably not going to know who yeah. Ross Lynch is. But, yeah, I didn't know he was a Kids Bop kid. That's yeah. awesome. Said he was in a Kids Bop video in 2009. So I guess oh, that, God. yeah, I don't know what video it was. And then there's also Zendaya. Oh really? No oh, way. Yeah. No. I don't know who she is either, but she was she in, uh, oh, she's not in the new Spider-Man movie. Don't say, yeah, she's not MJ. She what? I hate she that so much. She plays MJ in the Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, but she like, does? Yeah. What she the got heck? she again got her start on Disney Channel. She was in Shake It Up and Shake did like dancing and singing and stuff. But yeah, wow. she's the new MJ. Pretty okay. good show, if I might add. Uh-huh. Back when Bella Thorne wasn't legitimately insane. Good times, good times. <laughs> she's in that Netflix thing now too. She's it, I didn't know she was crazy. Uh, she well, she's definitely different than how she used to be. Yeah, she, she was just again one of those Disney Channel kids that, that just like, loses just their like mind. Went off the deep very end. much, yeah, very much trying to distance herself from being a Disney kid. Who has so successfully another, uh, done Miley that? Cyrus. Because like Miley Cyrus. Yeah, but like Seriously? who who did that and like didn't like <laughs> screw their life up? I mean Miley I mean Miley Cyrus obviously successful, but not really well, like, the role model you'd like to have. Um, See, she just hardcore went through a phase though. Yeah. Like she's she's slowly coming out of it, which I've always called. I always said that was going to happen. She will go on a Hannah Montana reunion tour, and I'm going to be front row. <laughs> front row. You heard all it right. here first. All you right. I don't. I don't. First. I don't see a Hannah Montana Put this reunion. this in writing. <laughs> That's not happening. That's not happening. Yeah, I don't feel like that's happening. I feel like she was a respectable artist there for a sec, and then just went off the deep end. But but she's coming back. From I'm that. not an expert. I don't. I'm not a Miley Cyrus expert, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. Front well, row. Yeah, but... All right. We'll there, there's Selena Gomez, right? Is she okay or no? Yeah, she's she's more than okay. She's really good. <laughs> she's more than okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like her her music, you know, I like her older stuff better than her newer stuff. But you know, some of her new stuff is pretty good too. Mm-hmm. She she's she's like a positive role model. You know, she doesn't do anything crazy like that. So yeah, Selena Selena Gomez. Okay, so know. it's not as all as grim dark as I thought yeah yeah all right good that's good plus like when she when she was on the disney channel good content like (laughs) that that was a quality show it's a legitimately good show i watched about two episodes of it ever so i have no reference it's it's like it's like harry potter part two part two is it all in the same universe because that would be crazy (laughs) it might as well be it might as well it's all the same (laughs) Dang. Out of all the stuff that I've uh, wanted to watch because of the show, that is not one of them. But I appreciate the appreciation. 
Is that on Netflix still? Uh, I just have no idea. Yeah, hell if I know. Probably in, like in Pakistan or something, but not in the U.S. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it. I've perused Netflix quite a bit. I know there was the movie. Like, I, I don't remember it, but there was a movie. And yeah, I probably watched episodes of it here and there at my grandma's house because I didn't have TV growing up as a kid. Yeah, so. there was a movie. The movie was... It was good. Was it like yeah, it was like a like a finale kind of? Uh, the movie wasn't really the finale. Yeah, it wasn't they really. they kind of set it up to be, but it ended up not being. Yeah, the mm-hmm. show was just like too popular for them to end it with the movie. Yeah, I feel like the stream frame rolling. Rip. Yep. Another show I only saw like two episodes of, despite everyone loving what? it so much. Yeah, yeah, I was I was deprived. Me? Of a lot Dude, of these things. Dude, that is like that is like a classic. Literally, I would watch a show. I would try to get into a show. Like when I was younger, my mom was like, "I don't like that show," so I never watched oh. that show. Again. Oh, dude. Uh, so I was deprived of a lot of things. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. All right. L- l- less Wolfenstein, more Drake and Josh. I oh, I, I, I gotta I, finish Wolfenstein I, first, and then I'll get right on that. <laughs> Unless there's Nazis in in Drake and Josh. Dude. All right, all right. Add, add it to the hey. watch along list. All right, we got. We're gonna have a long watch along list <laughs> yeah. at this point. Should, did, I tell my, uh, did I tell my Drake and Josh story? I don't think you no. did. Okay. What? So, so I, you know how on like DVR is you can set it to like record like every possible yeah. episode that comes out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did that on Drake and Josh on my grandma's DVR, and so my my grandma was like flipping through the DVR once. She was like, why the heck is there 70 hours recorded of Drake and Josh? <laughs> Guys, it's so good. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. I didn't do that. <laughs> but... It's so good. Drake and Josh is legitimately good. Like, it is a legitimately so good. good show. I mean, to this like, day, it still stands up. That that intro theme song, dude, so good. So good. Yeah. How many seasons did that go for? It actually wasn't on for as long as you think. Um, I think it was like 2004 to 2007, which is only like three years. Yeah, it's um, hardly any time. I thought it was on way longer. Okay, all right. Right, I know. Like when I was a kid, it just they started like, looping it afterward. Just... Right, it was Drake and Josh was huge, but then like you look back now, you know, all these shows are on like their fifteenth season. Yeah, there's only four seasons. So crazy. before we get too far from Kids Bop, this was actually a legitimate topic of mine at one point. I just wanted to know what songs would be would be genuinely improved by Kids Bop. And my answer was gonna uh, be was gonna be Rap God, but I guess that exists and someone did that, even if it's fake. <coughs> I just wanted to hear it. You need to listen to it, oh my god. I will. But like like are there any songs that would like really be improved by Kids Bop that you can think of? Uh I, I don't see anything being improved. Improved, not at all. Like, there's some trash songs out there that could probably oh, I mean, even, even like, for like, like joke factor. Like, what would make them enjoyable? Like, what songs huh. would be rendered enjoyable if they're sung by a group of kids? I'm just trying to think of terrible music right now. Yeah. I always enjoy listening to the kids' bop renditions of like, like rap songs or hip hop songs because they have to literally change like every word. See, that's that would have been all my answers. It's just hysterical, oh. like what they come up with. Like <laughs> thrift shop is golden. Oh wow. god, I can't even like picture even, what they would um, say. Even their version of "Closer" by the Chainsmokers is like great. Well, so there we go. I, I I don't want to hear uh, them try and sing uh, "Rack City." <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one that's a great uh, one well like yeah what, what would they replace the the bitch with like, or any of it with well, girl, uh, girl just yeah girl. any of it <laughs> respectable well, now woman. In the cle- yeah in the clean version he would say chick so that, i don't know but even that's probably too much for kids bob yeah kids bob yeah i don't know <laughs> Just like any, yeah, any like hip hop song or like ex- really like explicit thing. Like I just want to hear them say it. <laughs> it's crazy uh, because they do it. Yeah. Like, if a song is popular, they're gonna cover it no matter how like explicit it is. Um, mm-hmm. And that's another reason why I, <laughs> why I love listening to it. It's just hysterical to see what they come up with. 
And then like any anything by Fetty Wap. That that'd be right. that be interesting. <laughs> So I actually I I just I just thought of mine. I want to hear them do Nine Inch Nails is closer cl- closer. That's my pick. Oh yes. <laughs> I just 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 want to hear what they come up with. And if you don't know the song, just look at the lyrics. Um. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we didn't do that as a legitimate topic. It was just an idea. No. It was just like a spitballed idea I had at some point at work right. probably. Um, kind of like they a have a Halloween album, and well, the last, go. the last song on that is just called like "Spooky Noises." Oh, dear. Spooky noises, and it's 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 exactly what you what it what you would think it would be. <laughs> Spooky noises in the night. I don't, I don't know. That's what I was thinking. It's just them, like, making quote-unquote spooky ooh, noises. I'm a ghost. Yeah, Kids bought ten. And... Yeah, they do ugh. Monster Mash. They do Ghostbusters. <laughs> they do um, Disturbia by Rihanna is on Whoa, that album. That's a little and weird. that's probably one of my favorite covers. <laughs> um <laughs> Just I like if you that song even existed. The song itself, like the Rihanna song, is really freaking good. I... Let me tell you, <laughs> they sing it like offbeat. Like it's almost like certain parts of the song are almost rapped, and it's just great. I need to like give you guys a list of like good kids' pop songs. Well, quote unquote, good kids' pop songs, um, and just have you listen to them because, boy, it's an experience for sure. So I wonder if they could take a song that's like totally explicit and somehow work with it. Cause uh, have you heard the song? Oh, it's terrible. It's "Deep Throat" by Cupcake. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I wonder if they could take something that just totally just terrible. And do that, which they probably couldn't, because that's all that is about. It's, it's just her saying, hump me, fuck me. <laughs> Daddy want to make me choke. Yeah, but it's terrible. Yeah, the music video is pretty intense. Uh-huh. But yes, Kids Bop is my guilty pleasure for sure. Even though I'm very open about the fact that I do enjoy Kids Bop. Uh-huh. I need to eventually buy every album physically so I can just own every Kids Bop album. So all, all 37 albums, including the, Dear the Lord. Halloween. Yes, That's including Halloween and country. all the spin Country. That is a dangerous <laughs> amount of money you want to give to Kids Bop. <laughs> what is They've that? They've released like... like literally like seven Kids Bop like gold greatest hits albums. Oh my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, just give us a list and then we'll go through them. Because yeah, oh, yeah, I I, I gotta at least hit All Star. F- at yes. the very listen minimum. Listen to the first the first like three seconds of photograph and you will understand. You will understand everything. Your life will have new meaning. Just clairvoyance all of a sudden. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> everything makes sense then- now. Yeah, y'all can thank me later for bringing this back into your life because it's everybody knows about Kids Bop, but not everybody knows how amazing it is. Intimate, intimately know Kids Bop. Right. You know Kids Bop, but do you really know Kids Bop? <laughs> would you consider yourself a Kids Bop enthusiast? I would. <laughs> there's not there's not enough of us in the world out there. All right, if we make this the number one Kids Bop podcast, we can get up, hit up the charts of iTunes, and then just reach that that small, you know, very quiet majority that is out there just craving some analytical discussion on Kids Bop. Like, we can provide that for them. But. My dream is to meet the Kids Bop kids, so let's make it happen. How, I just want to know how many, like, phases of kids. Like, are they like the Power Rangers where, like, they get rebooted, like, every season? It make, right, every it album? makes me think of, like, those K-pop groups <laughs> that it's like, yes, you're in this band until you're 13, and then once you hit puberty, eh, you're out. Then you're aged out, yeah. <laughs> it's like a Korean StarCraft player. It's like, you gotta go. 
Well, I'm very interested. <laughs> I never, never thought I'd legitimately give them a go. Um, oh yeah, guilty pleasures. That's what this was about. Um, yeah, like, it's like not a kids' ball. It's. I mean, like, like you said, like I'm pretty much open with what I like. I don't really. I'm not really ashamed of anything I like, so it's kind of hard for me. Like I just don't give a fuck. Um, mm-hmm. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I can I can rattle off a few. Go for it. So um, I I love like every single Liam Neeson movie. Even every if it's single bad. one. There's some there's yeah. some duds out there. Star Wars Episode One. Okay, yeah, that, okay, <laughs> not that one. That wasn't his that fault. One. <laughs> that what that's not a Liam Neeson movie because he doesn't really star in it too crazy much like his other movies. Like yeah, I'm there talking are about Liam like, Neeson movies. Like they're just him. Uh, exactly. Like I love the gray. Have you guys seen oh, that the one? The gray is awesome. Yeah, but I I fucking love that movie. I mean, I'm sure there's some naysayers out there, but that's a ba- badass movie. What's the and one then, where he's just in a plane? Like j- that's just not, him in a plane. Not, yeah, it's nonstop. Nonstop. See, I didn't see that, yeah. but I just feel like is it's seriously like is it just two hours of him beating up people in a plane? Because that sounds great. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, but I'm it, in. It, it's fun though. <laughs> I'm in. And then like I, I just can't get over you know Liam Neeson's voice. Like to me, he's he's up there as you know God tier up there with you know Morgan Freeman. Like James the Lee way Jones. you get there is by just smoking a pack a day, and then your voice will sound godly. <laughs> Yeah, he, but, I mean, it kind of makes me sad that he says he's pretty much, like, done with action movies, pretty much. Like, he's getting too old for it. I'm getting too old for this. But, you know, he's great. Like, even when it's not a great film, he's, uh, he, he can still make it at least enjoyable. Like, did you ever see Taken 3? Yeah. I, I never saw <laughs> Taken 3, but it just, it looked, it looked interesting. I don't know. Maybe I need to catch up on my Liam Neeson films. <laughs> Take three in how they yeah, put take the three. three yeah, it's like no, don't. E. <laughs> it's Res- like, resist, it's resist the. <laughs> it's like you've already <laughs> achieved cringe, and I haven't even started yet. Yeah, because what the fir- the first one, his daughter gets kidnapped. The second one, his daughter and wife gets kidnapped, and then the third one, his daughter gets kidnapped, and then he gets kidnapped, and then it, <laughs> and then they kill his wife. <laughs> they kill his wife. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Three. But even though she's killed, like. You don't feel remorse at all. Yeah, it's it's like, like, okay, she's dead. <laughs> all right. You put a three as your E. Like, I don't get to feel sorry for you. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember the, the story beyond that, but <laughs> I remember I remember enjoying Taken 3, like, slightly better than Taken 2. Really? Okay. Yeah, it was it was slightly better. Not much. <laughs> it's just like like you, like they kidnap his dog. Like they like just go down the yeah. road. like they they stole his car keys. <laughs> like, just, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like they could just make it go on for like twenty sequels. Uh huh. Well, I I think Smosh. They did a video about that. Like, I haven't watched Smosh they, in like five years, so okay, I, I, it, I wouldn't know. It probably came out five years ago when oh, okay. that, when like Taken Two came out, but. Uh, they, they're doing like yeah just mock-ups of those like sequels to taken i think the final <laughs> one was like oh it's a taken you know fucking like 70 and he's like an old man and he's like oh i'm just taking a shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's good that's good yeah <laughs> not enough to make uh, me go back to smosh but that's good no yeah definitely not but yeah any any of the liam neeson movies i tend to enjoy like I, I bought this about it? collection and everything. Are you guilty about it? Is... Um, yeah, a slight, a little bit. Okay, yeah, I'm okay. Kind of guilty. And about, that, like, that counts. Movies. That counts. And uh, I can throw out some other I, other ones I have. All right, like, you have I, dignity, I, I, so yeah, go for it. Yeah, I just okay. Don't. So I, I I really like the 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 Resident Evil movies. Oh no, I can't get behind like, that at every all. single. <laughs> no, can't not do even it. the first one. Not even the not first, even the first one. one. It does not hold up. Really? Uh, because to me that them okay for me that was like one of the first horror movies I ever saw. It was okay. the first Resident Evil movie, and it scared the shit out of me. And then uh, because the way I saw it was at my cousin's house, and it was like on his birthday, and we watched the first three Resident Evil movies that night. So yeah, we watched it. Watched them till like three in the morning. And like the first one just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> like I remember, I was all scared. I didn't want to look out the window. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's and, the uh, one where they tried to introduce Leon and like the actual game characters, and then they just oh, like weren't? They didn't go anywhere whatsoever. Yeah, that was uh, 
That was Resident Evil Retribution. So that's like that's the, the only that... thing I remember. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, that's Leon. Oh, he's he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do yeah. anything at all. Nothing. They tried. Like I, I don't even remember him saying anything. Like, oh, I'm Leon. Okay. It's like, oh, he's got the hair. That's about it. Yeah. And then I remember the, I saw that movie in theaters, and I remember seeing like Why? one of the one, one of the dead like I don't know, uh, umbrella agents or whatever. Yeah. And he was like breathing when he was supposed to be dead i remember that really bothered me like <laughs> that guy's is, dead that's the why issue. is he breathing that's like i issue. saw his chest going up and down and everything like he couldn't even like try it's to like, hold his breath at all like, exactly like he didn't even try <laughs> it's like this movie is shit like let's just let's just phone it in i don't blame him yeah i don't i really don't then, blame them <laughs> i i haven't seen the most recent one though yeah, no I'm sure it's not good. I I just heard like that. I just heard like I haven't seen the recent one either. I just heard it was like just the most jump cutty thing you could possibly imagine, and I cannot handle that. I hate rapid jump cuts so much. <laughs> it's like they, like uh, one reviewer I watched like he said like it jump cuts like 20 times just like showing like a guy like putting a hat on or something. It's like I can't. Oh my I, God. I physically cannot handle that. I will puke. Um, yeah, that's too much. No, that's a that's Cause, a really good guilty cause pleasure because that is that is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. Because at, at least once a year, I'll I'll go and watch through all the movies. No, okay, that's even worse. So, no. well, I, I, so I I I bought them on Blu-ray. I own all of them on Blu-ray except Gosh. for the newest one. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's so much worse than I thought. All right, that's a great. One. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, but that that's pretty much like actually what got me into that series <laughs> was uh, the first movie. Even though they're so, like literally, then... they couldn't be less related if they tried. No, it couldn't be, but it, it's kind of its own own thing if you look at it that way, because it's it's nothing like the games at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is fine, but yeah, it's fine. It's it's don't, just not good. Don't try to introduce <laughs> the like, game characters and then don't do anything with them. Exactly, and then I remember they were talking about for like Resident Evil Six that they were gonna introduce like Alice, the, you know, the char- yeah. main character from the movies, but like people were like, no, no, don't do please, that. like keep keep that shit out of there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised she's still doing them. It's like it, wait, it's it's over now though, right? Or like didn't they yeah. like they, they're like trying to do like a cinematic universe and like branch out? But I doubt that's gonna work. I I, I think they said that this was the final one, okay. and then they were probably gonna reboot it or something. Probably reboot it Which, and actually I make mean, it horror. That would be really cool. If yeah, that would be cool. Went back to the mansion and everything. But mm-hmm. I guess I guess but, my guilty pleasure. Is diners, drive-ins, and dives, but again, I'm just I'm not oh, guilty God. about it, I, <laughs> or just Guy Fieri in general, like just anything that he produces, like I'm all about it. But I'm not but guilty because I don't care. I he's such an it. asshole. He's like, so <laughs> not. He's so cool though. He's not an asshole. <laughs> but he looks like one. He, he looks, just has the he super looks like he looks like, hair. The, he looks like the, like the biggest d bag ever. But he's so yeah. he's, he's so cool. Like man, <laughs> my hero. Like Guy Fieri is my hero, twenty seven. Guy Fieri. How how do you say his last name? I can't even say it. it's like it's not Fieri. It's like Fieri. Like it's you know, okay. It's, there's a pronunciation to it. That and that's I, I'm not I'm assuming enough. that's like a, Italian. Maybe well, you I know, know. I I just said I'm a really big fan of him, and I don't even know. So okay. that's that's how <laughs> that's a, let's get to the bottom of this. Because that sounds really Italian, but Fieri national. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know too much about Guy Guy Fieri. I just I was just imagine him as just pure American, but uh, oh, okay, it literally yeah. just says American. But I want to know is like his is pe- related questions on Google. Is Guy Fieri really Italian? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> so I'm guessing he probably. Is. Oh wait, okay. So Fieri was actually born <laughs> Guy Fairy, but changed it back to the old family name when he married his wife Lori in 1995 in order to honor his grandfather. He changed it to Ferry when he immigrated from Italy. Uh, that's oh. Fieri translates more or less to proud. Okay, so that's an interesting Guy Fieri fact that I didn't know. Huh. So he changed it to Fieri? Yeah, well, it, it was like it got changed and then changed back to what it originally was. I think he oh. was just making a pun because, like, Ferry as in, like, immigration. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I don't, that's probably not what it was, but that's huh. just what I imagined. But yeah, very interesting. Some of the names is Ramsey. The more you know, five ten. In relation to Gordon Ramsey, I, I I'd assume not. <laughs> I would be very surprised if they were at a family reunion together, barbecuing. Yeah, me too. 
they're like on the opposite ends of yeah they like don't look at each other the, food, the food's yeah the food spectrum yeah like one like, is the loud not noxious asshole the other one is barbecue the other yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah gordon's just like you know high high art food. yeah exactly it's, the, the soup is dry <laughs> what are you uh, an idiot sandwich <laughs> <laughs> Chicken's still raw. <laughs> it's fucking raw. <laughs> it's fucking raw. I love that guy. Oh, he's great. He's great. I yeah. I love it when he interacts with kids because he's like so nice and tender and like. But then just like the second he gets in front of adults, he just like f- throwing things and shit. It's so funny. Oh, uh, like you'd think he'd be an asshole to kids too, but I guess not. No, he's like he's like. <laughs> You know, you can do this, but he's like, just go look up at like a, there's a YouTube video. It's like basically Gordon Ramsay with kids versus with adults. And it just like cuts back and forth. And it's just like, it's a night and day contrast. It's it's so good. <laughs> he's just like so nice to them. Oh, and then he gosh. just shatters the dreams of all the adults. It's so good. Um, he's huh. like a legit family man dad too. Yeah, no, he's Like great. I've seen videos of like him with his kids and it's just, it's fantastic. Yeah, he's a great dude. Same with Guy Fieri. He's a great, he's a other family man. Um. Any other guilty pleasures that we all harbor? Mm, well, for me, you know, I really I own one of the One Direction albums on oh, CD. No. Let's see. Oh, I own the uh, Take Me Home Good album, morning. and I'm not gonna lie, like I like it. It's pretty good. <laughs> um, I haven't I haven't really listened that much to any of the any of their other stuff like their newer stuff so you know i can't say anything about that and then can't speak on those but you an expert of this one album <laughs> yeah Enthusiast. Uh, you know I, I i i would recommend you know i can't uh, <laughs> i'd love to i just can't <laughs> <laughs> uh also another guilty pleasure of mine it's probably Katy perry like I don't know. I, I really like her old stuff. Her old like stuff. I, mm. But like, like kissed a girl and all that. Like teenage yeah. dream or like like yeah hot yeah and yeah, cold. yeah like okay. like teenage dream. I like I, I like both those songs, but like the uh, the teenage yeah. dream album, whichever that one was, it's pretty oh, yeah, good. Yeah, that one's great. Yeah, but you know sometimes like if I'm if I'm jamming out to that in my car and I'll, I see people. Like if I'm at like a, a red light or something, and there are people around, like sometimes you know I'll just turn the volume down. <laughs> just like a shame. Like, no, that's like, a guilty pleasure. Yeah, like, yeah. like a little bit. It's, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure. Um, but you know, like if I'm listening to my girl Taylor Swift, you know, I I, I have like no shame. Blast you know? it. Uh, yeah, blast that because you know Taylor Swift, she's she's my girl. Uh, new album comes out in like 11 days so get hyped for that one and uh yeah it's pretty much it for me i guess well that was a good one um any final uh honorable mentions um yeah i have an honorable mention for an iphone game that oh, like i no. enjoyed when it came out so iphone gaming so yeah remember the movie uh, Batman Dark Knight Rises. How could so, I forget? Are you kidding me? Uh, okay, so th- there was no console game for that. But, it. <laughs> but but there was an iPhone game. And I don't know, I really liked it. <laughs> ha- have, you, have you seen it? Gaming is your ally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they, they had the... You, you could fly around the city. like you know, Or not fly, but you know, just glide around. That's all I remember about that game. But you know, you know, there's this, there's this game called, running. you know, we have a whole like trilogy where you can do that in a real yeah. game. Yeah, I know. But this was before like I could get away with playing the, the Arkham series. Like my mom said it was bad. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're pretty dark, but like it's still like t- it, it pushes the T rating pretty far, but still not crazy. Mm-hmm. And then but... night is just straight up M because they're like, fuck everything. We're just going to. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it wasn't, it was just dark. It was just, yeah, yeah. There wasn't anything too crazy. There was no pornographic scenes. That would be very jarring. It's like, (laughs) unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. (laughs) I mean, Catwoman often, he turned down. That's true. That's true. 
But yeah, I remember playing that on my iPhone 3GS, which that's like a really old iPhone, yeah, by is. the way. It absolutely is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know how many generations that is, but it wasn't a good iPhone. Or it was at the time, but not anymore. But yeah, shout out to that game. I, yeah, it was like six dollars on the App Store. <laughs> was it, was it worth it? Was it worth it? Wow. At, at the time, but was Bane yeah, like in it. it at all? I mean, I'm looking at the IGN uh, review and I'm seeing a they screenshot of him. Okay. Yeah, they reviewed it. I'm trying to see what they gave it. Who there reviewed was... it? Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing not seeing who did it, but it got a five point five. That's so, not terrible. Yeah, it's not the it's worst. It's not good either. <laughs> yeah, yeah five point five is like lower than the Ideal. average game. Yeah. I would say. But, but yeah. yeah, I guess it, it could be worse. <laughs> it absolutely it could, be. could be worse. It could be the the Batman Begins PS2 game. Was well, that bad? I mean, yeah, it's it's rough. Like Batman games for a while were rough. There's like only a few standouts before Arkham Knight. Before Arkham, the, like the the Batman games on Cartoon Network dot com. Yeah, they they were pretty good. Dude, okay, That's true. So those games were awesome. Did any of you play the Teen Titans like fighting game? Oh yeah. yes, that was yes, like that was, was that was I did. what it was. I mean, I enjoyed that so much. I played way too yeah, much. Yeah, it that. was it was a lot of fun, but. Like as a little kid, I had a hard time trying to do all the like special moves and combos and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was very. So deep. If I remember correctly, yeah, it it was like to do some of the moves, like it was just so much like button pressing involved. It was and ahead as of a kid, time. like I had no idea how to do that. Yeah, if I could get a remaster of that on PS4, I'd be I'd be very happy. I don't need Injustice Two, I need the Teen Titans Flash game. Do you think that's still up? Oh like, no! There's no way. No, we gotta find out though. I don't think so. We gotta find oh, out. Man. I don't know what, I what I'd was. search for that. Just Teen Titans. Yeah, I, it's probably I, Teen I, Titans I Go shit now. Yeah, that's true. But I'm sure it's like uh, on some backwater site. Like someone uploaded it somewhere, and you can play it. Yeah, but maybe. Who, who did you guys main? <laughs> Who's I mean, your main uh, boy? Cy- oh. I I liked <laughs> Cyborg because he could you know shoot a beam. Uh huh. I oh, know this character is badass. I still want Beast Boy and Injustice. Damn it! Like uh, he'd be so cool. Yeah. Like he, he he'd be. have so many different moves, but whatever. Just keep shoving yeah, Cyborg playing... down on everyone's faces. I like I Cyborg. I remember playing but... as Beast Boy. I remember Beast Boy. He he could turn into an eagle, and that was one of his attacks. Yeah, it was, was dope. Just come down as an eagle. Yeah, that was dope. Or it was a hawk or something like that. So, well, it could Some be either one. I mean, he could turn anything. That's true. It was it was a green. It was green. Whichever uh, it was. They're green all. They're, I mean, he, they're all green. But so that doesn't yeah, really narrow it down. <laughs> no. Man, man. What a great show that was. That man. Yeah, the that the was... original Teen Titans is fantastic. Can, can mm. we please like you know get rid of this Teen Titans go shit? It makes and bring me back. It makes me like one tear original. down my eye. Just man. Yeah. Like uh, what were they thinking? More like I don't teen know. Titans blow. Yeah. Teen... <laughs> oh. And it, you know the worst part is, is that in Teen Titans Go, they keep making like all these references to the original show, just like tugging yeah. it. Yeah, it's like how it's, dare it's you? It's really frustrating. Like, like they know that like the people, you know, the people watching, they they want like you know actual Teen Titans, and they cause they, they like make jokes about it in in Teen Titans Go, and I'm like, wow. It's almost like yeah. uh, the but Sonic yeah, like, Boom yeah. show. It's like where the Sonic Boom show yeah. is like mostly like making fun of Sonic the half the time, and like Sonic fans. Yeah, that sh- that show is way crazy. too good. Like I've just seen clips on YouTube. Like that show is like really smart. And and Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo the movie that was so good. I unfortunately don't have any recollection of that. I'm sure I saw it. Neither do I. It's been too long. Oh, you, you guys. It's been you guys way don't too remember long. that. I mean, I, I remember don't. it existing. They, they go to they go to Tokyo to fight the ink. Monster guy, huh? Yeah, I don't. It, oh, I don't remember literally any about it. I may, no, I, maybe I didn't see. It. I knew it. Ex- I know it exists. Just... It it was a good movie. Huh. It was a good movie. Now I That's... really want to watch Teen Titans. Yeah, let's get some Teen yeah, Titans. Let's get let's do it. Like Teen Titan wa- Titans watch along. Add that oh, to the list. Oh, add, add that to the list. Add that to the list. That theme song <laughs> is a banger. Yeah, it, it really is. It's so like stereotypical. Oh, it absolutely but is. It's, it it's, is fantastic. It's very stereotypical. 
not but. still not the best DC TV show of especially of that era, but very good still. It's nostalgic. It's yeah, it's no Justice League Unlimited or of course the original Batman animated series, but it's very good. Um Yep, it's up there. Huh. Alright, in that case. So I'm gonna do mine next. Um so there's just something I was pondering as I do. Um so I was wondering how important to you in games is immersion and like the idea of being immersed in the experience and something to supplement this. I sent you all guys a quiz called the gamer yes, motivation did. profile. It's on a uh, quantic foundry.com foundry.com. Excuse me. And I just wanted to like share our results and then kind of use that as a, you know, as a kind of a bouncing off point to kind of dive deeper. So I'm just going to share mine real quick. So my profile ended up being, Action-oriented, spontaneous, relaxed, independent, deeply immersed, and creative. And that pretty much nails it for me. And then you go on to, like, the graph they have. They said 90% action, 86% immersion, 88% creativity, 13% achievement, 15% mastery, and 25% social. Like, that's they pretty much got me to a T here. And then there's, like, a little bit more description, but I don't really need to get into that. So yeah, what did what did you guys get before we move on? Uh, all right, I'm gonna go because my phone is at one percent battery. Okay, yeah, just shoot. Okay, <laughs> uh, my profile was action oriented, spontaneous, and shocker completionist. Oh yeah, imagine oh. that. <laughs> imagine that. So I'm gonna fuck it. 80, 85 percent action, forty nine percent social, twenty percent mastery, fifty three percent immersion. 56% creativity and 47% achievement, which, you know, uh, that, that doesn't surprise me. Or, well, yeah, I, I, I guess it does. It's, isn't it a, achievement, little, a little bit? Achievement is, isn't, doesn't that include trophies and whatnot? Or, yeah, I, I mean, 47%, like, it's, yeah. it's almost half. That's like, true. It's a decent, respectable. I think it's a decent, yeah. Mm hmm. And that that's that's it for me, pretty much. How about you, Micah? Um, so I got action oriented, spontaneous, social, deeply immersed, and inquisitive. Inquisitive, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but on the chart thing, I got ninety three percent immersion, ninety percent action, seventy one percent social, twenty one percent mastery. 46% achievement, 26% creative. And would you think that would is accurate? Um I'd say on the social part maybe lower than 71%. That seems Cause, high. Yeah, cuz you know for me like I I I never I'm I I sh I always put on my, you know, PSN account that I'm not online. Yeah, that's the like, antithesis of social. <laughs> all the time because I, I don't want anyone to like try to hit me up because i don't want to play a game with you <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah unless if i'm online then that means i want to play with someone but most of the time no i mean i think the only social part i really like is just talking to people in a party that's like the most social i'll get yeah i love that that's pretty much that's yeah funny. that's and funny I you say that because i remember like at one point during the summer I, I don't know. I think it was like a glitch or something. But every time I would go on PSN, like no matter what time of day, it always showed that you were online. <laughs> that was so. That was that was a weird like little glitch or something. It was it was through the PlayStation app. So yeah. like, it said I was always online, like no matter what. You know, I thought like someone rest mode. Like was that a part of it at all? Well, it was so I had the app, but like I wasn't signed into it. Oh. Or so I was signed into it, but like it was locking me out for some reason, and like I, I didn't I, I didn't want to remember my password and all that, so like I went, didn't bother going and fixing it until like a while after that. But yeah, it was good for it was it was for like a solid couple of months. Like I was yeah, online no, all the time, perpetually online. <laughs> and, like, and, like, every time I saw that, I would just like laugh because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not really online because like I, I I asked you about it one time. I'm like, oh, yeah. I could I could see you're playing 
Hotline Miami or whatever it was, and then you were like, wait, what? I am? <laughs> <laughs> it's news to me. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't even say I was playing anything. I just said I was online. Like, oh, I'm just staring at my PS4 screen. Like, that's pretty much what it looked like. But that was it. Oh. And, uh, yeah, that was weird. But, yeah, for the most part, everything else seems pretty or seems spot on. Like, the immersion part, yeah, I like to be immersed. It was at 93%. So, oh, that's a good number. And,. Action ninety percent, maybe that's a little high, because most of the time I don't want to be doing too much action. I don't, not I don't not too much. Can't have too yeah. much action. Yeah, maybe lower that down to like sixty five percent or something like that. Mm, okay. But yeah, yeah, I'd say it's about right for the, for the most part. Just give or take fifteen percent. How would you go? So, so, mine's a lot different than your guys. I figured um, much. I am calm, spontaneous, relaxed, social, deeply immersed, and expressive. Expressive. So I have all these buzzwords right. at the end. <laughs> so yeah. I have um, eighty-seven percent in immersion, twenty-five percent in action, seventy-six percent in social, zero um, percent in mastery. Huh. Really? Okay. One percent in achievement. Jeez. And seventy one percent in creativity. That's is that accurate? Because that seems a little strange. Um. See, for me, like, I would tend to agree with it. I don't know about the zero percent, but yeah. for me, it's like I've never been one to like. I don't feel the need to. Um, like one of the one of some of the questions were like, you feel the need to play on the highest difficulty or collect all the things or unlock all the items or become like super powerful and everything. Yeah. And that was never something that I, I don't necessarily feel that way. Like whenever I play a game, I'll genuinely play it on just the lowest difficulty just cause I want to play it and have fun. Like that's why I don't particularly like games like dark souls. Cause it's just hard to be hard. And that's just not my type of thing personally. Yeah. Um, but there's obviously, like, exceptions to that. Like, if it's a game that I really, really enjoy, then I am going to want to um, find everything. I mean, Jack and the Precursor Legacy, I've platinum three times now. So Again, congratulations. That's crazy. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Though. Everybody freaked me out when it came out on PS4. You know, I woke up that morning, and I went to download it, and it, like, wasn't on the store yet, and I got super mad, and I emailed, no! I emailed Sony. Oh, yeah. Then, oh, shoot, hey, where's my Jack like, and Daxter? <laughs> I know. And then, because it came out, like, a day before I was le- going to leave for college, so I literally had one day to platinum it, and, um, like, an hour or two later, I was able to buy it, and then I platinum the game in, like, four hours, I think, um. Damn. But granted, like, I've already platinum that game twice before. Like, I know the game like the back of my hand. But, um, yeah, so there's obviously some exceptions to that. But, yeah, that's just, you know, that's not really important to me. Now, 0% to 1%, I don't quite know about. You know, probably more in between, like, uh, 10, 15, maybe. Mm. Um, but, yeah, for me, it just depends on the game. Because... Okay. Definitely. Um, so I think creativity and immersion were my highest. Uh, I would agree. The types of games I play are, you know, very based on that. I love a good story. I love being able to play a game and like really connect to the characters and everything. I think that's important. Um, granted, there's games, you know, they just have fun gameplay and they're just fun. But um, I tend to gravitate more towards you know, a pretty world, a good story, good characters. I love me a good character creator, so. Oh, yeah. I'd say it's it's fairly accurate. Fairly? But yeah, okay. the whole 0 to 1%, nah. You know, maybe a little bit higher, but. So basically, mine was the only one that was, like, pristine picture perfect then. Interesting. Okay. Well, you probably put more time into yours. Like, did you mm-hmm. carefully go through... I mean, I read all the responses. I didn't. I, okay. It was still pretty quick. I just, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I did the best I could, but like 
most most of them i was kind of like middle of the road you know that yeah. one option like oh yeah sure whatever <laughs> yeah sure whatever <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i tried it <laughs> yeah I, I i didn't like go above and beyond i just you know kind of read through and clicked it but yeah no i yeah. I just want to think about this because some people are very much like they just want to like be competitive and like have it as a social environment. But I'm very much the opposite. And like, I just like to be in, immersed in a game's world and like setting and characters and stuff. I was just wondering like what's more important to you guys? Um, because I don't know, just the way that th games are going, like it's definitely going in a more like social uh, direction. And I don't know if I like that particularly again variety is the spice of life and like i i do enjoy a multiplayer game every so often but that's generally not what i gravitate towards oh definitely like most of the games that i play are like single player you know story driven experiences you know once in a blue moon i'll play a single player game like uh this year you know i played over 50 hours of star wars battlefront i think oh wow and that's you know i don't even like star wars like i i've only seen like one of the movies yeah that's... But, the, but, but the game was just like like i really liked it the new one and yeah yeah the the latest one star wars battlefront ea star wars battlefront ea yeah mm -hmm. ea yeah. they gotta EA. put that tagline in there it's like in the logo it's so obnoxious <laughs> yeah and uh you know, like, other than that, like, I don't really play multiplayer, like, ever, usually. Like, it's pretty rare, so, you know, the way things are going, you know, su support the uh, single-player games, man, because uh, I'm, not, I'm not really, you know, big on multiplayer, you know? They will always be around. Like, there's some, like, major hyperbole, like, single-player games yeah. are dying. It's like, no, they're not. Like, it's just, yeah. like single player games from like big third party publishers might you know be less common but like sony mm -hmm. is never gonna like ditch all their single player stuff like i feel like with like the first parties especially like they will always have the safety net of single player stuff and like bethesda doubling down on single player is really great like they've put out some of my favorite stuff this generation like dishonored 2 uh prey doom wolfenstein like that's mostly all single player stuff and like yeah doom has a multiplayer and yeah they're doing quake champions which is only multiplayer but for the most part all single player experiences and all good single player experiences um you know i was just curious it was just a i really like the quiz just trying to you know gauge where we're at um because yeah i just i i do love a good single player story i like to be immersed and i'm not looking forward to a world where everything is a game of service but of course it'll always be around but well just... um wolfenstein 2 it it made headlines for only having single player yep purely like single player multiplayer which i don't know it's kind of a bad thing that it's new it's like oh why doesn't it have multiplayer yeah it's like this like, is not a good thing shouldn't. like support it it's like yeah. it, it would be bogged down by a multiplayer. I don't even know what a multiplayer for that game would even look like. It would just be like dual wielding clusterfuck. Exactly. Just another tacked on demo that's probably kind of like the Doom multiplayer. Which was felt good. like a tacked on demo. Like it was developed. Yeah. It it didn't even make it for one. It's like that's a problem. Like mm -hmm. they and wrote then... the kings of multiplayer and they didn't even put any time into it. Exactly. And then if if uh you know uh the wolfenstein crew they wouldn't put time into a multiplayer then that's less time they could have put into the single player and that that would have equated to you know not as a good of a game you're playing right now yeah exactly you know it's just or or they could have had some other studio come in to make it but even then it would still feel really tacked on It'd be really shitty yeah it would just be like and, i mean uh, it, would, it would just feel like a world war ii shooter i feel like exactly like, you know allies and Nazis. Well, that's original <laughs> i know like uh return to castle wolfenstein had had a multiplayer i think it was pretty popular um yeah so did 2009's wolfenstein i tried to find 2009 wolfenstein on the steam store i guess they took it down it was like yeah, right when they got acquired down. so like they like we don't want this and now it's like <laughs> super hard to find so i was gonna play it for history's sake but it's 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 a little little tough to track down and i don't want to play it on ps3 um, yeah, it the PS3 port's awful. Um, I still have my 360 copy, but it's not backwards compatible, which makes it a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's like it's super hard to play. 
like unless you have a PS3 or a 360 still hooked up, you know, you ain't gonna get to play it. But it's personally my favorite in the franchise, even though they did a lot of things wrong. Even more BJ... so than New Order. Oh yeah, BJ Blazkowicz mm. is like a skinny, puny schoolboy who has brown hair, and I hate it. <laughs> but um, I really like. I just really like 2009 Wolfenstein, even though it's been dubbed like the worst. But, but I mean, I would I would say you know that's you know that's fine. But man, New Order is so good. I think it's like they did everything right. But I mean, if it's good, it's good. Can't can't fault can't fault anybody on that. But huh. Mm-hmm. Anyway, single player games will be around forever. Don't worry. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Not going anywhere. So uh, I mean, it, oh, there's enough ahead. people like us, you know, who who like single player games. So I don't see them going away. You know, yeah, like there's there's not going to take them away. I mean, they'll they'll put on tactile multiplayer, like Tomb Raider, like 2013 had yeah. like the like just the yeah. shittiest multiplayer ever. Oh yeah, it was terrible. Like no one wanted to play that. Yeah, and, I wonder yeah, who like, did play that. I, Nobody, because Rises I doesn't have it. I played like a match of it, and I was expecting it to be like uh, Uncharted multiplayer, but it wasn't that. Yep. <laughs> Uncharted is how you do attacked on like unnecessary multiplayer. Like, exactly. Yeah. It's 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 there and it's it's great, but it's yeah it doesn't feel like it's too tacked on like all the other single player games. Yeah, for the longest time, like I was, except for like me and like my closest group of friends, like. I was really in the minority that really liked single player games. Like I was very much exposed to like the the people that like only play Madden and Call of Duty and like oh, but, but if you play the campaign in Call of Duty you're a fucking nerd. Oh. Type, type of mentality. <laughs> it's like you're still playing the same mm. game. Like <laughs> like fuck off. Um so yeah, it's like I feel like that is I don't want to say the majority because you know there's a lot of people that buy a lot of diverse different games, but those people will always g- gravitate more toward multiplayer, and if that might skew it, I don't know. And then you look at games like PUBG, which are like you know entirely multiplayer and that are just super ridiculously popular, and makes a ton of money. And then you also see how much money um, the publishers are making on loot boxes and shit like that. It's like it's just not not a comforting uh, situation, but mm-hmm. it'll be fine. Get, just you know, Sony, give us you know the Last of Us, give us the stuff like that. Days Gone, and such. So, Matt, yep. what's your topic? My topic is if you, you know, let's just say the governor of your state was just like, you, you know, you got to leave. You know, you got exiled from, for, what, <laughs> for whatever Exile. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what you did. Maybe, maybe you were eating all the, uh. All the corn or something. Potatoes in my case. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, my topic is where would where else in the United States like would you want to live? Like, what state? Um, or you know, maybe you don't even want to live here anymore. Like, is there like some country that you would like to try living in? Uh, I don't know. This was just kind of like a last minute topic I thought of. That's a good one. So for me, for me, I don't know. Like, I feel like it would be kind of cool living in California for like maybe a month. A month, <laughs> be- because like you know it's it's so expensive over there. I was so there yeah, for two no weeks and was losing my it. mind. Like I don't know how people live there all the time. Like, well, it's what, so what was your problem with it's it? It's so expensive. Oh, There's so yeah, many yeah, people. Yeah. Like everything's crowded. Like it, and it's just everything costs so much money. Like it's 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 too much. And just the attitude yeah, so just that's, the people there. I mean, the driving. Yeah, like so that's that that that's like the only reason like I would only stay for like a month because there's you know there's no way I would be able to realistically afford living there like even even like a studio apartment is like fifteen hundred dollars a month that's insane and that's no, that's but, like nothing but what if that's the, like i was gonna say what what if the supposed governor ga- paid you to leave like oh here's See, that's like a, a million different dollars different. here's that's Get a whole the, okay well all right well, i mean in, in that case you know if we have like all the money and resources in the world uh i mean the, 
all right, you know, I probably wouldn't want to live there because, you know, I'm pretty paranoid. And I know that, like, you know, earthquakes, you know, I I, I just, I'm not about those natural disasters. Ring of fire, know? man. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like Florida, California, or any any state that has, like, it's near you know, water. crazy <laughs> natural disasters. Like, like I, I'm not about those hurricanes, not about tornadoes, not about earthquakes. You're cutting out, you're cutting out most of America at this point. Yeah, I mean, so. where I, where I live in New Jersey, we don't we don't usually get that kind of stuff, except you know, hurricanes. Came Sandy like five years ago, I think, that that messed us up. But if yeah, you don't want don't... any natural disasters, move to Idaho. We we don't get any. Oh yeah, I mean, I heard you know Max was saying that it's like the fifth or seventh safest city in the world. Yeah, or something Boise, like Boise in or... particular. Boise, not 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 the world, the U.S. The U.S. Yeah, you know. It's yeah, great. so you know, maybe maybe you know, maybe I'll go over there. You know, except our, except our winners last year and and reportedly this year are just fucking just abysmal, ridiculous. So maybe not. Maybe maybe hold off because it was well so bad. You know, I, I I'm not a fan of the cold. Like I I have a really low tolerance for cold well, weather. See, it gets pretty it gets pretty cold here. Not crazy cold, but I'm also used to it and I like it. So I I might be skewed a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I I could try for like a year, see how I like it. You know, you just want to travel around, just like figure out what you like and what you don't. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly don't don't know like what for i can't say 100 percent really yeah. where i would want to go like what what states have you been to outside of new jersey mm, i've been to pennsylvania because that's like right next to me been to new york i've been to i've been to florida like a long time ago a few years back like probably five or six years mm. i really liked it but you know tornadoes and sinkholes and stuff like that <laughs> no, not, not about that not, not trying to live there and you know <laughs> they had that that crazy hurricane like not too long ago well forget what it was called irma i think yeah yeah irma you know that really like messed up florida i i can't believe i forgot all about that yeah like like it was bad a lot of places in florida were just like flooded like so badly People people lost like their homes, their cars, and like everything. Yeah, like I no, I I can't. I'm not gonna take risks like that. So you know, Florida. If if they didn't have all that stuff, then it would probably it would probably be like the ideal place for me because I I like warm weather, and it 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 looks like a really nice place. I mean, it is a nice place. I've been there before. So you know it. You know if you take out the uh, natural disasters and stuff, then you know yeah, I, I would probably go to Florida. Nice. If, if we're talking, we have we're rich and we can go anywhere. Like I would just want like a place. Yeah. I, I would I would live in Alaska and then just have Alaska? like baller internet and just like be hooked up. Because <laughs> I just I I I am a okay. creature of the cold. And I was I have been told on numerous times by people who live there like that I would do just fine. Um, hmm. Probably yeah, probably. I mean, I don't know what the living conditions are on Anchorage, but if you have a lot of money, you can do whatever you want. Um, realistically, I don't know. I mm, yeah, you make a really good point with these natural disasters. It like really kind of uh, lessens yeah. the desire to go anywhere. Like outside yeah, the country, like, you know, I've always wanted in to. This high... Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, like, like if 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 I wasn't kicked out of New Jersey by you know the governor, you know, I would just stay here because, like, like I said before, we don't really get that that much over here, like in terms of natural disasters. So, like, you know, I, I like I like it here just fine, you know. No, not a lot of natural disasters you gotta worry about. But you know, governor kicked me out. Yeah, so, you, know, you got no go choice. You got no choice. Just gotta pack your bags. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Oh. It's a little bit easier outside the U.S. I feel like, like I've always wanted to oh, yeah. try to live in yeah. uh, like New Zealand for a while. New um, Zealand. 
everyone seems to love Switzerland, even yeah. though I think like I hear a lot of there. good things about Canada. People love Canada too. Yeah, yeah. It's just really, like, really nice. people keep tax saying, to hell. It's like it's like a like a stereotype or something. It's like people keep saying that Canadians are like the nicest people in the world. They are. They they I, they kind of live up to a little. I mean, not obviously not. I mean, individually you can pick out people, but like culturally, yeah, a little bit kinder in general. Mm-hmm. It's of so course like, exaggerated uh, and stereotyped. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. So like I feel like that that would be a, a place probably like if you know if I, if I'm gonna like move out of the country, you know I got exiled from the U.S. Yeah, like Trump's like you you gotta go <laughs> like we're deporting just everybody at this point just it's just yeah. <laughs> I would probably go for out of the country like New Zealand, um, Germany. I would probably really like to, um, except they got all these refugees to deal with, so that's not ideal. Shout out, shout out to Max. Shout out to yep. Max. I I know I took uh, one semester of German, so that'll get me by. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to live there, but I'd really love to see Japan, just because it's so drastically different oh, culturally. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I could live there. I don't know if I could survive in a five by five. Yeah, no, like apartment. J- but Japanese apartment. is like such a crazy language to learn. Yeah, dude, it's, like, and they'd barely speak there. So, like, really, yeah, you don't even need to learn it if you're just talking to people. Of course, you need to read, but well, probably, but yeah, like nobody hardly even talks to each other, so you'd probably be fine. Um, at least on the short term. Uh, I was trying to think, like. I don't know. Um, Europe's kind of a f- yeah go for it okay so I was gonna say like yeah if I'm totally exiled out of the country I don't want to go to Mexico no because uh, I, there's nice parts okay like the touristy parts the, those yeah. are nice then like it's pretty two, much like uh, like America you go two blocks away though and it's like oh yeah it's the, the slums but if you go there and like you have like a ton of money on you like you're you're pretty much like a million there there because the dollar here is worth so much more than like their peso. Oh yeah. Peso is like oh. worth dirt. Exactly. But like if, if we bring our, our money there, like are you, if you have like a couple thousand dollars saved up and you go there, like you'd be set for a while. That's like, a good point. I didn't even think about currency. Mm-hmm. Like what would like, be the best exchange rate? I, I'm sure it's like that with other countries, but I know especially Mexico, like our, yeah, their, their dollar is hardly worth anything compared to ours. Well, when I went to Poland a few years ago for vacation, uh, like whenever I would buy stuff, like I would use my debit card, like the the prices over there would say like, you know, uh, like a hundred or something, and I like on on the uh, register it would come up as like twenty dollars. I'm like, damn, you know, I feel kind of rich in this country. Even though, yeah, it's, they mean the same thing. They're just, yeah, yeah, it looks, yeah. it looks, yeah, more expensive. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What is what is the country that is not third world that has like the lowest, um, lowest value currency that you could just go and be rich in? Hmm. I really don't know the answer to that question. I have no idea. Yeah, I'll have to look it up later, but yeah, that's an interesting thought because, like, I don't know. I'm not against leaving here, but, like, yeah, if I was forced out, exiled, where could I go? I don't know. And, and it also, yeah, it's like we have to differentiate between if we just have as much as we have now financially or if we're set up. Like, that just that changes it completely. It's like if I can go, yeah, if I can yeah, go live definitely. and be rich, like, I, I mean, you can choose anywhere. But realistically, so, I, I, I don't mean, know. I mean, I... I would recommend New Jersey, you know, New Jersey <laughs> okay. gets kind of a bad rap, you know, cause we have Camden and Trenton, but you know, the, the area I live, I live in like, I mean, I live really close to Trenton, but like the area I live in, it's, it's nice. You know, I mean, in my town, I don't think there's like a crazy amount of crime. I don't really know to be honest. Cause my police department doesn't have like a Facebook page, so they don't. I have no idea what really goes on in here, but no Facebook. It might as well not happen you know, at all. Yeah, I <laughs> no mean, crime at all. I, like I don't know. Like, I think it's it's a nice it's a nice area. I would recommend it to people. 
but but from your uh like, i can't live here anymore the, so the stories can't. you're always telling about your job like it sounds like you live in like <laughs> it sounds crazy da downtown chicago like yeah all right well all right well, well that the, the kinds of stuff that happen at my job that that can happen like it could happen like anywhere like i don't know i don't no know about that because you're know acting like that. it's no big deal <laughs> Like it sounds like you're just desensitized I mean, to it. That's what it sounds like, because that doesn't happen at most grocery stores, especially not here. <laughs> yeah. Especially. All right. All right. Maybe, maybe I am desensitized to it. I don't know. This is oh, fun. Yeah. But it's like, normal. it's you know, I, I've never seen anyone like you know, guns blazing, trying to rob like the bank next to the grocery store. So Thank it's God. not not like that extreme. Yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. How about you, Emma? Where would you go? I have seen. Oh, sorry. Me, um, I have always wanted to move out to California. Um, granted, I've only visited once, um, but I like you know there being. I like big cities. I like being around a bunch of people. Yes, it's like freaking insanely expensive, but um, I think that's just something that you kind of learn to adapt to. Um, in terms of outside the country, I don't think I would ever want to actually, like, live outside the U.S. Like, I've been to Mexico, and I've been to Europe. Um, and, you know, I love visiting there, but I don't think I'd ever want to, like, actually live there. It would just be too too different for me, I guess. And we have freedom here. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I'd have to, you know, learn a new language and adopt new customs. And, you know, like, I'm American. I don't feel the need, you know, I don't feel the need to, like, live somewhere else. Visiting is one thing, but, like, actually living there is something else. Yeah, something else, Charlie. It's just that culture, sh culture shock. It would be hard. Yeah. But I freaking love Kansas City, though. Like, shout out to my home. Um, I've actually read, like, a bunch of, you know, those big wig, um, like, news sites do, like, you know, what's the best place to live in the U.S.? Yeah. And I've seen multiple, um, multiple articles where it's actually Kansas City's number one. And it's because, like, it's not super expensive to live here. Uh, there's not crime rates pretty low. Um, there, in terms of natural disasters, like yeah, we can get some like tornadoes and stuff sometimes, but it's not like it's not like you know this big thing that we have to worry about all the time. Um, the city's clean. We have some great sports teams. I just I love it there. I don't think that I'll live there for the rest of my life but I'm definitely I'm proud I'm proud to be from Kansas City very nice yeah I I need to if I have the means I would like to travel around the U.S. specifically because I've really only been around the west like the California Washington Oregon Idaho like area um frequently but yeah no I've I've always I've heard good things about Kansas City specifically um just haven't gotten out I noticed, like, out in the Midwest, like, they're way nicer over there. Like, you'll be walking down the sidewalk, and they'll say hi to you. Oh, like, yeah. Even though they don't know you. Like, I, I thought that was really nice. Whereas, it's like, actually, yeah, you're kind of considered, like, rude if you don't. Yeah. Um, Like, everybody's always, and it was so weird, because, like, that's how, like, that's how I grew up. So, you know, if you're just walking down the street or whatever, and, like, you make eye contact with someone, like you smile and say hello. You know, mm. that's just what you do. Whereas when we went to Vienna, um, you know, my professor was like, it's not like that here. Oh, <laughs> you know, no. like, <laughs> if you make eye contact with someone, you look away. You like, look you away don't as smile. fast as you can. <laughs> right, they're like, you just, you don't do that because it means something, like, completely different, which is just crazy. But yeah, like, people yeah. in the Midwest, especially Kansas City, like, you can have like a full-on conversation about your life with a complete stranger and it's just like normal see I, I i wish we had that here in the west i i want that 
but it's just not possible because it's a culture thing. Like, it's just not acceptable to wave at someone, you know, going down the street or acceptable to, you know, say hi and ask how their day's going, you know, in the, in the, you really? know, the checkout line, you know. It just doesn't happen. It's not part of our culture over here. Like, it almost feels like we're in a different country compared oh, wow. to over there in the Midwest or even the eastern part. It's just different. It's just not how it is. Oh, that's weird. I thought, like, you know, every place in the U.S. was like that. No. Nope. Like, the West, everyone's, like, so conceited over here. Everyone cares about themselves. <laughs> They're I all looking out for number sometimes one. Sometimes, annoying, like, you know, sometimes I just want to take a walk, and, like, you know, I don't... You know, I don't want to say hi to people, but I know that they, they're going to be looking at me and they're going to say hi. So I'm like, okay, hi. Then, <laughs> I'm walking here. <laughs> like the next time I see them, if we're walking around in like a circle or whatever, I'll just like completely ignore them. Cause, you know, I'm not going to say hi to them every single time. Even <laughs> that though would be sometimes, obnoxious. <laughs> That's even though, nice, even though yeah. sometimes like they, they do get, they do like look at you and I'm, I just like nod my head. I'm like, ugh. I don't want to do this again. <laughs> don't. Yeah, don't that's wanna... like. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, I was gonna say like it's it's just too much at that point. Like I already said hi to you. Why do I have to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> don't put this pressure on me, that's man. That's one, right? Yeah, too much. <laughs> that's one thing I hate about just walking around campus here is like people will talk to you. Like I've had people like I'm just walking to class. And people just come up next to me and just be like, hey, how are you? You know, like, how's your day been? You know, what class are you going to and stuff? And I'm just like, I just want to, like, listen to my music on my way to class. Like, <laughs> you know. Fuck so off. <laughs> but it's like having, being able to have those types of relationships with people is nice. But it also kind of sucks because not everybody wants to be that way all the time so mm -hmm. you end up running into people like me who whenever me and somebody are like approaching each other i just like get on my phone and make it look like i'm doing something yep just so i don't you know because if you're just walking and it doesn't look like you're busy then you almost feel like obliged to say something um uh -huh. which is why i'm just like yeah so over here um yeah, it's nice because you have, you know, everybody's super nice and talkative and everything, but there's also, like, so many people are just on their phones all the time, you know, just trying to look busy because yeah. <laughs> they don't want to <laughs> deal with people. It's the universal um, sign of don't talk to me. Right, for real. And it's totally me, and I'm trying to get better. Like, one of my friends called me out on it once, and I felt kind of bad but it's just, you know, like, it's just a culture thing to, like, being on your phone. Like, if you feel like you're in, like, an uncomfortable situation or, you know, you're not really doing anything, like, it's just natural to, like, to pull out your phone. Even if you, like, it's such a bad habit of mine. I'll, like, pull out my phone. I'll look at all my social media. And then, like, I'll put it back. And then, like, two seconds later... I know nothing's happened, but it's just like a habit of mine. I like to make myself look busy so it doesn't seem super awkward. Yeah, I feel like phones and uh, headphones are like the universal science. It's like, oh, yeah. 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 yeah a, lot of times I, a lot of times I just have my headphones in. And I'm not even listening to anything. I just have my headphones in because I'm just like, yeah. Like, don't talk to me, please, right now. <laughs> but people still do. Yeah. Oh, see, that's yeah, that's don't do that, yeah. people. Like, if you're out there and you do that, don't I know do that. for real. That's don't too be, much. don't be that person. Because then there's times where I actually am legitimately listening to things, and people are trying to talk to me, but like I have my headphones in, and then they think that I'm just being a bitch. Yeah, it's like I'm you look like responding. the bad guy. Right, but like in reality, I'm like, sorry, like I'm like, I have my headphones in, like I'm doing stuff, or I'm listening to something right now, so you can't get mad at me or <laughs> blame me. But that, that sounds like such an easy way to make friends over there. I mean, not butting in on people, but like 
just saying hi over there. Like, oh yeah, it is. It is great. I, some of my friends at school, like some of my uh, best friends at school, um, it was just kind of like that's just how we met in a sense. You know, mm -hmm. one of us was just like, "Hey, how are you doing?" Or you know, if uh, there's like one person sitting by themselves in like the cafeteria, like almost always someone will come up and like be like, "Hey, can I sit down?" Uh, you know. Wow. It's now, nice. Now I, really just want, now I just want to move over to the Midwest so I can make friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's insanely hard to over here in the West. Like it's not easy. Like um, my my friend he uh, he he commented on like how all my friends are Mexican. I'm like, what? That's kind of weird. And then I thought about it. I'm like, oh, that's right. But it's because they're the most approachable people over here. Like there's there's a lot of like like rich white people over here and they don't want to be fucked with even by like the middle class white people <laughs> like it, it's weird wow it, it, yeah it's kind of fucked up that just but... reminds me of that um, that picture your grandma posted it's oh. so good oh my God. <laughs> that'll never get old <laughs> that was terrible i'm pretty sure i still have the screenshot saved on my phone because i just uh. thought it was so funny <laughs> Oh my god! And then yeah, I've I've had that several times where I've had like a family member be unintentionally racist like that, <laughs> like they they're totally trying not not to or you know they didn't mean it at all. It's just how it came off. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> so that'll just that'll never not be funny. I'm sorry. Yeah, but. Yeah, when, when, when she said that, like, or because I had originally told her, you know, oh, I'm the only, you know, white white boy to graduate in my class. And then I remembered that there was a special ed kid who was also a white boy that graduated. But, like, I didn't count him in my head because I never saw him. <laughs> he might as well not exist. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Any other final uh, honorable mentions of where you would live or if you were to be exiled by whomever your governor happens to be? Why is it the governor? Like, I don't think they have that power. Well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I thought, I don't know. It's just because, uh, you know, like the president of the United States, you know, I, I figured he would be too busy dealing with, like, important shit. Like playing golf. <laughs> right. Yeah, like playing golf then to, you know, exile you. So I just thought of like who the most powerful person in New Jersey was. And I just thought, you know, I guess that would probably be Governor Chris Christie right now. I mean, yeah, that's powerful. I just don't know if like what yeah, the protocol I mean, would be for that. It, I mean, well, it's just it, a hypothetical. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know either. This was hy hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. So. I just like to, just, to, just to be annoying like that. It's just what I thought of first. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, In that case. Wait, have we all gone? Uh, I haven't gone yet. Okay, I almost did it again. Michael, what's your almost. topic? Okay, so um, my topic is like, what's your what accomplishment are you most proud of in life? So it doesn't have to be like anything like too crazy. It can just be like something that you're just really proud of. Like, I just fucking did that, and it was amazing. And it doesn't have to be like I'll graduate in high school or anything like that or it can be but it's just up to you but yeah i just want to know if there's something you're really proud of and there, if there's a story behind that and you want to share it and uh i mean I, I i can go first if you want me to go for it so um i don't know if you know this but i i did competitive swimming for a long time i did it from when i was like eight years old so i was 18 so I did it for a long time. That was like the only sport I was okay at. Like I have no hand-eye coordination at all. That's why I'm terrible at video games and I'm terrible <laughs> at any sort of sport with a ball. Like I, I'm just not good at it. I mean, I was somewhat okay at soccer there for a second, but no, I can't hang in football, baseball, or any of that. Like I just end up like getting hit in the head with a ball or something. But <laughs> but for some reason, like swimming it really clicked with me so um i don't know it's just like oh get to the end of the end of the pool as fast as you can like, okay that doesn't sound too hard 
Uh, I mean, it, it is hard. It is hard. <laughs> <laughs> you're moving through water, and it has, you know, it's you know, you have to become one with the force of water and try and force your way through it. But anyways, my story, it's it um it takes place uh, my senior year of high school, and so this was uh it was at the district championship for uh, high school swimming, and uh, so all my previous years of high school, I I'd, I'd done pretty good, I'd say I went, I I made it to the state championship like every year for uh, the hundred meter or hundred yard breaststroke. Do you guys know what that race is or what breaststroke is at least? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was the one that I was like the worst at in swimming class. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not an easy stroke. But I I'd, I'd always been good at it. And uh anyways, um going into districts, um I, I I wasn't doing so great. So uh I think the fastest I'd done that race that year was like a one oh nine. And I mean that's you know, a minute and nine seconds, which I mean that that's okay, but a state qualifying time has to be like a one oh six nine or you know, one oh six point nine or uh faster but anyways um um i'm going in for the uh the like the final in districts for the 100 meter or 100 yard breaststroke and like for preliminaries i had gone on 109 okay and uh i get up to the blocks and i'm like the shortest guy there I'm like fuck why is everyone taller than me <laughs> like <laughs> For reference i'm like yeah like five six around there so you know to be good at swimming you need to be really tall but my coach had always told me he's like no don't let that get to your head you just have to swim differently so anyways um yeah i line up for the race i get up on the blocks i'm like okay let, let's see what i can do here well anyways uh, some i left out like the pool we were using the heater had broke down so we weren't able to use it for oh. practicing. Yeah, so I was just like, just double fucked there. So I was going into the race like, uh, fuck it, let's see what happens. I, I know I haven't done the right training or anything, but we're, we're going to see This can't possibly go wrong. Exactly. Like, oh, in my head, I'm like, uh, whatever. It, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I get in. And uh, like, as soon as I hit the water, like, I know it's going to be a good race. I'm like, I feel good right now. I, I don't know how I feel good, but I feel good. <laughs> and then uh, so I swim. It's it's four lengths of the pool. And uh, once I uh, finish, I look up at the at the board and I'm looking at like, uh, oh, I got fourth place. OK, but then I'm like, wait, I'm looking at the wrong person's time. And then I look down and like, oh, I got a. 105.9 like that's the fastest i'd ever gone in that race and then i had gotten the state record or state qualifying time by a second and i was like oh my god i was oh, i was wow. so happy about that that's awesome like I, I got i got out of the pool i like first person i saw i hugged i hugged my dad and then i hugged my mom and i went up to my coach and hugged him and then my cousin was there. I hugged him. <laughs> like I was just going around hugging everyone. Like I was just so happy about that. Like, and I had, even though it was, I, it was only like third place, but like still that, that was like amazing to me. That's awesome. And um, I don't know why, like that, I, I'm just so proud of that for me personally. And then like, you know, I went on to state later. It didn't do as well, but in, in my eyes, like that stuck out the most was that district meet my senior year. But yeah, but for me, I'm really proud of that. That's great. That's a great one. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Nobody for spoke me, up. Oh, go um, for it. Okay. <laughs> it's like I'm waiting. Uh, for me, getting yeah. um, on the first team all state basketball team at state my senior year. Um, I played basketball ever since, really ever since I can remember. <laughs> um, and my ninth, basically we went to, we uh, got second at state my ninth and 10th grade year. We won state my 11th grade year, and then we got second my senior year. And my senior year of basketball, 
was just really, really special to me. Um, three-point shooter out of both the girls and guys teams. Um, for a while, I don't think I ended the season um, having more than one of the guys, but it was just crazy, you know, because like the other couple years of high school, um, I was never really given a ton of playing time or anything. So come senior year, it was like, you know, all the girls that were really good were gone. And it was just kind of like we had to kind of step up and being able to get on the first team all state and like uh, just playing really good basketball. Definitely, you know, one of the best times of my life, honestly, I'm some of the best memories I have are with that team and playing basketball. So that's probably my something I'm most proud of, like rising the ranks, you know, having to kind of prove to everyone that, you know, you're not completely worthless um, and being doing pretty damn good at it, too. So that's probably for me. Another good one. Yeah, mine, um, it comes back to drumline for me. Like, the the first, my freshman year of high school, coming out of concert band, like, it was, it was just, like, a total, like, culture shock. And I knew, like, from, the, from, like, the first day, I was like, this, this is something special, and I'm going to enjoy this. But, like, just having to, you know, really improve and get better over the course of the first year and then winning best percussion out of pretty much the whole state. Like Dang. it was just like a rush of just like accomplishment. And like when we did this, you know, you know, it was, we put the work in, we did this and like, yeah, the rest of the band didn't get as high honors, but we didn't care because we got best percussion in the state. <laughs> um, that's, all that that's, that's just percussionist ego. Uh, it just happens. Um, yeah, that, that competition in particular was just really special. Like I just, I'll never forget just like, you know, marching off the field just with com- like we didn't mess up at all like like everything went right like the stars aligned for us like all of our parts were great and just the crowd just like i'd never been in front of a crowd so huge before just the just the roller coaster of emotions and then just also senior year after i was the section leader at that point so i'd pretty much you know climbed um and just Ranked seeing up the progress that my section had made pretty much autonomously like i am not responsible for how fucking amazing they played that year like it was it was so good like like if you compare where we were my freshman year to my senior year like it was nine day like we did incredibly like just in terms of skill and technicality like just total 180 and like we still played good, just like the music wasn't as hard, even though there was a lot of hard parts. But man, just the stuff that they played, like I'll have to send you guys the video. But man, we did some yeah. crazy, crazy stuff. Like we, we, we met the requirements, and then we're like, you know what? Let's let's do this. Like let's 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 beef it up a little more. Let's let's make this a little bit more technical. And we got shafted at the once yeah, the final com- com- uh, competition came. Like I'll never forget that. It's like how how did it, it just didn't come together like we did great the second to last we got best percussion like landslide and then it just they uh they just didn't give it to us so but i was still like so proud of them because like you could tell like i've never been part of a section that wanted it as much as that group did and i'll yeah i'll never be i'll never forget just feeling a sign of accomplishment for like you know nurturing and like helping you know foster their greatness even though they after a while i was just i was holding them back man they they just did so good so kind of two parts one part um student one part mentor Mm -hmm. kind of two different sides of the coin of the of just the whole equation um equally equally as satisfying though in hindsight so what what did what did what did you play like for i played percussion? bass drum sorry i should have provided yeah. yeah bass <laughs> dude like you go watch like core level bass drum like it is the coolest fucking thing ever 
like everyone like wants to go after snare and stuff i'm like no go listen to some like legit bass bass lines like it is crazy the stuff that they put out just the sound is is magical the, the splits that they some of these guys can do is just absolutely crazy and like i wanted to be that and mm-hmm. i did and we did like we had numerous best percussion awards like all f- my four years just we didn't get That's the last dope. one which sucked um yeah, uh, that's those are those are some of my like most fond memories like of all time. Just each I have different fond memories with each year and each group, and man, just great, great, mm-hmm. great times, great times. So are you still doing that in college right now? Uh, uh if I was, from... if I didn't have to have a job, probably. I just oh, you know, okay financially, just like time wise, it's like it's so much more in high, in college. Like that, you. It's oh, like, it is your life. Intense. It is your Shit. life. <laughs> There's nothing else. That intense. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so it's pretty much like a sport at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, no, especially uh, their preseason, um, like camp. Like it is. I thought uh, high school band camp was bad. Like college band camp is insane. Like just the amount of hours that they have to put in, and just the crazy where it's like you have to work out like a football player. Um, Damn. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, part of me wishes I had pursued it more, but also I was just kind of, I was kind of satisfied, honestly. I was like, uh-huh. you know what? I well, had this yeah, experience. Definitely. I'm going to, you know, go try this adulting thing now. <laughs> try that out for a bit. Yeah, try it out for a spin. <laughs> Turns out yeah, overrated. I, 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 but I totally get what you mean by like feeling satisfied with it. Like, yeah, I was like, I did my, I did my due diligence. I, you know, I worked uh-huh. my ass off. We did great. I'm kind of good. Mm-hmm exactly and I, I like i felt the same way with swimming like okay after high school like i'm not gonna go out of college swimming because i'm not that i'm not up to that level those guys all. are crazy exactly and that's an insane amount of work and i don't really want to do that anymore because <laughs> yeah. there for a while i was so i i'd have practice like early morning like 5 30 in the morning and do that until uh high high, sc- high school started and then right after school, I go and go practice for another two hours with a different league. And that was more of an intense workout. So I was, yeah, swimming like four hours a day, and that sucked. Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> what was your diet like? Uh, I, Let's see. I mean, I ate like a, just a bunch of protein bars, like really? drank a lot of Gatorade. Nice. Like that, that's what it mostly consisted of, like lots of protein lots of electrolytes and then whatever my mom made me for dinner (laughs) (laughs) i mean we were supposed to eat healthy but like the thing with was swimming like you can eat whatever you want and none of it's gonna stick to you yeah it's just you know if you want to perform the best you have to eat eat really good like yeah lots of protein and all that lots of calories and but. even just going past like college bands like drum corps like the best guy we ever had he was center snare and he knew it he knew he was good mm. and so he got he got accepted into one of the best drum corps like in the country um, oh wow yeah and so he went he went to t- you have to do like seven camps i think and like pay like just thousands and thousands of dollars and he said like he just like burnt out on it he's like this is just work now like this is not fun. So I I just like looked as like it's it's I'm going to burn out on it. Like it's not like f- a fun competitive. It's just like it's just, you know, tooth to the nail mm-hmm. work just, you know, just destroying your body competitive. Uh, <sighs> I just, that just did not sound appealing to me anymore. Cuz like there See, like what? there was competitiveness, but it was always like just, you know, mostly mm-hmm. for fun and our own satisfaction at the end of the day. It's just when, you know, people, they, they, they take it too seriously or it's not really taking it too seriously. It's just that they're, that's their thing now, Yeah. but I don't want it to be my thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's like you have to go invest all in. Yeah. Like every second of, you know, your life for the, you know, moment in your life, you have to be dedicating it to this one thing. Yeah. And then like, I noticed with, with some things like when you're, dedicating that much time into it, all the other parts of your life kind of go to shit you yeah, know <laughs> yeah. you have to sacrifice a lot to yeah. be on that level with I mean, anything like, really mm-hmm. i yeah. just view like high school sports and stuff like that because like i played basketball and i played volleyball like my entire life and i was in the orchestra and everything and those are like memories that 
will last a lifetime. Yep. But for me, it's more just like, you know, that was a really nice chapter of my life, you know? Yeah. And now it's, you know, now it's over. You know, I don't play sports anymore, even though for like my entire life before college, that's like all I knew. I went to school and then every single day after school, we'd have like three hours of basketball practice or three hours of volleyball practice. And that's literally all I ever knew for my entire life. So it's like, it's nice to just kind of be done, you know, yeah. like I was tired and yeah, I just view it as a chapter, you know, mm-hmm. a super nice chapter, but all chapters must end just like college, you know, mm-hmm. college is freaking great, but it's going to end. <laughs> and like, it's already almost done with my second year, which is crazy. Because I feel like I just started. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, crazy how time flies, especially when you get older. Oh, yeah. Just gets faster, unfortunately. Man. Sticky mother file. Did yeah. Matt go yet? Have you? Matt. Plat Matt, you there? Plat Matt. What is your um, greatest accomplishment that you're proud of? Well, you guys have like actual real accomplishments. <laughs> no, it's an accomplishment if you if it's if it's an accomplishment to you. That's all that really matters. Yeah, if you're really proud of it, like it's all okay. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm pre- I'm pretty proud of all my platinum trophies. <laughs> oh, <you did. laughs> which one? Which one specifically? Yeah, which though? what are you most proud of? Uh, which one? Yeah. Oh man. Did you do Hannah Montana? No, okay. I should though. Shouldn't. You should. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Massage. Which... Oh, I mean that that was a tough one, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, um, I don't get it. I'll ne- I'll never understand buying games just for platinums, but I I respect the grind. Dude, 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 dude. It 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 was worth it. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know. I would, I would have to like look at all my games and see. Cause I don't, I don't remember which ones I plat. He, he's just rolling in platinums. You can't even narrow it down. Yeah, I remember. Oh there for... well, I guess uh, one that I'm really proud of is the Kingdom Hearts One platinum, because that it it's so much work you have to do to like get it, and you you have to beat the game on like without dying. That was one of the Fuck trophies. Fuck that! Think. Like no, no, no continues. Um, plus it, it was like, I think it took me like 65 hours to do or something like Man. that. Jeez. And it, it, it was pretty crazy. So I, and that's like one of my favorite games like of all time. So I think I'm really proud of that one in particular. But, uh, yeah. And then I guess I would have to say, you know, graduating high school because, you know, I don't know. It was just kind of surreal because, you know, I knew, I knew that you know I would graduate eventually and stuff. But like, like when 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 it was finally happening, graduation, I was like, wow, you know, these these last four years went by like a lot faster than I thought they would, and yeah, you know, I was just getting through that, and I don't know, that's pretty much it, really. I'll never forget being in my very first period of high school, like the, like the first morning on the first Monday, and the teacher <laughs> saying, yeah, it's going to go by really fast. And then all of a sudden, I'm graduated. Like, that's how fast <laughs> I felt. Yeah. Yeah, so, it, it went by super quick. Yeah, high it, school is starting to feel like a distant memory for me. Like, did that actually happen? Did, was it, was it real? Like a, it's all a simulation? Yeah. Was that like a fever dream I had? Like, where parts of it were awesome, parts of it sucked? Like... <laughs> I bet the awesome to suck ratio is like all messed up to what it actually was too. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm sure. Yeah, a lot more of it sucked than than it than it was awesome. But yeah, what what would you rate your high school experience on a scale of one to ten? Like for Mm. all of you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like a four. A four. (laughs) Dang. I I hated high school. Damn, that was like the worst. What was so bad about it? Like, I don't know. I was I was a lot more like how you say, 
like I, I was like I had a lot more like social anxiety and stuff mm-hmm. and like I, I wasn't very outgoing so I didn't really have like that many friends that I talked to and like I like 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 after after graduating high school like I just you know changed a little bit because like quote unquote going out into the real world kind of helped me and then you know like getting uh like a job and stuff like like when I was in high school I was just like uh like really quiet I didn't really talk to that many people it it, it was just about like uh like how I was back then you know I was like quiet not not very outgoing and like w- waking up like early ne- ne- never really my thing like for <laughs> me for me school started at 7:45 the bus at like so i would have to wake up around like 6:40 6:50 and get ready and i uh, i never never liked that part of high school either terrible <laughs> yeah. yeah and I, I, I don't know like i had i had some great teachers and you know you know some friends so it wasn't it wasn't like i don't know maybe maybe i'm exaggerating a little bit it wasn't like horrible or anything like that but overall i like college a lot better to be honest yeah waking up sucks I, I came up with so many excuses. Like, I can't even count all the excuses that I've made up throughout high school. I don't know why I can't get up. But I also stayed up super <laughs> late, so that didn't help. So, yeah, definitely not. Most of the time, that was it was actually homework-related. But... Oh, and going See, my to... high school... Go on. Uh, I was going to say, like, going to school every day, like, Monday through Friday, and then seven hours a day... That's just too much, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too much. And then homework afterwards? Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. Right, and if you played sports, then you got three hours of yeah. practice after that. So, you know, there most nights I wouldn't even get home till like, 8 p.m. Grind. But, like, overall, like, my high school experience, like, out of 10, I'd give it a solid, like, 9, 9.5. Wow. Dang. That's pretty high. Like, it was, high school was great. But granted, you know, like, I went to a smaller school, um, you know, so I was, like, the popular kid, you know, homecoming queen. Um, I had had the life, you (laughs) know. No, of course. Of course. It's a (laughs) 9.5 out of 10 for you. (laughs) The ideal conditions yeah, were all met I, I just like i love my class you know i had a lot of great friends that are still really great friends wow. i freaking love college too but like high school i feel so bad for people that like had such shitty high school experiences because like i loved my high school experience so much and i wish that like i wish other people could have really good high school experiences because i know for the majority like people hate high school People look back at high school and they're like, that was awful. Like, never in a million years would I ever want to relive a single second of my high school career. But, like, I really liked high school. I really did. I mean, if I could go back and, like, redo it, then I would I would maybe, you know, like, want to do that. To, like, kind of, uh, like, experience all the stuff I missed out on. But at the same time, uh now you know because of you know the past so like i don't i don't know what the fuck i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> like basically basically you know if i was different in high school then maybe you know i would be a different person now and like you know now now like everything is good like college is fine and I'm not I'm not as shy or socially awkward as I was back then, so you know that's all cool. But you know, like it would be cool to uh, like get the quote unquote full high school experience that I missed out on. It's like when you pause your video game and save, and then you kill everyone just to see what'll happen. 
Jeez. And then yeah. you just go back. <laughs> it's just yeah. kind of like that. Sorry, the entire population of Whiterun. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, like, I, so I was homeschooled like all years prior to going to high school. Oh, man. So that was like a really rough transition for me. I mean, it wasn't that rough, but it, it still wasn't the most comfortable thing for me. Like, yeah, it took me a solid, like, maybe a month or two to, like, find some friends. And then even then, like, I didn't find, like, my true group of friends in high school till like, junior year. And then then pretty much all the other friends I had before that were, were in, like, swim team. And that was, like, pretty much the only social out outlet at the time. And then, like, my parents were super strict and wouldn't let me go do anything fun for the most part unless if i told them exactly where i was at every given moment of you know of the day or... put a tracker device on you <laughs> yeah no no joke my my dad threatened to put a tracker on my truck oh my gosh yeah i don't want to get into that story that's, no, a little, that's okay a little too personal but yeah th that happened there for a second but the chiropractor table not per not too personal that's too personal oh yeah. <laughs> well, okay yeah maybe but uh, I, I was drunk so yeah that's true that, that, never mind. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for that story but yeah uh i mean for the most part high school is fine though i guess i mean at the end of it like i i my friend nate and i we we're we we're in these two classes together and they're right at the end of the day. So it was multimedia production and yearbook. And all we did was just fuck around in that class. That sounds like classes. a great time. Yeah. Like we just looked up stupid shit on the internet the whole time. And uh, we got A's no matter what. Heck yeah. <laughs> so that, that was, that was a good fucking time. And then we, we just made videos for people like, uh, I don't know, like these teachers would come to our teacher, Mr. Charvet, and be like, oh, we, we want them to make a video for us. So we go and make whatever video they wanted. Most of it was like these teachers trying to get their masters, so they had to have their class recorded. So mm -hmm. we just sit sitting there with a the camera. But doesn't get much then, simpler than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then like, oh, I'd edit it together and premiere and call it a day. And then they'd like buy us hamburgers or something. Oh, wow. That sounds like a great, great deal yeah. there exactly Dang. so we got something out of it like it was it was it was fun but yeah overall i give high school like maybe like a seven seven out of ten like it was it was good it wasn't great it was good did i did i ever tell you guys about the math teacher i had in high school i don't think you did but i'm very curious <laughs> <laughs> all right well there was this one teacher that i had this one year i think it was my junior year or yeah i'm pretty sure it was my junior year who basically like he never taught us like anything like literally <laughs> anything like instead he would just like another teacher would come in during the class and like the two of them would just talk about like baseball or like i don't know old old musicians that they enjoyed or whatever <laughs> and then like i remember at one point during like school he would just like he would he would like make us prank call his old boss <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is that a yeah, thing ever? Like, no idea what he was going through his head, but he was like, "Yeah, you know, you want to call up my old boss?" No. And he's like, he's like yeah, "Yeah, man." And then like he put it on speaker and everything, and just started like talking shit to his old like boss who was who like worked at like the fuck like a, a like a beer place or whatever a beer place and, okay yeah and then and then uh we started like prank calling pizza places <laughs> which was like the, 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 <laughs> the next step <laughs> is this guy still have a job uh yeah uh he doesn't he doesn't work at the high school anymore i heard but not not because like he got in trouble or anything i heard it's that they changed uh like certain education laws in new jersey so basically uh he had to go he had to go work at uh like the intermediate school because they i guess they raised the bar kind of i guess for for teaching high school so 
if he wanted to go back to his high school job, he would need like, I guess, to take like some extra classes. I don't know. They they just changed their education requirements. So now he's a teacher at like the intermediate school. Okay. And uh, yeah, so like I said, uh, he he ne- he didn't he did not really do a good job of teaching us. And so there there was this one point where there was like this big test coming up, and you know none of us in the class knew anything. So, uh, like, I think when, when, when we finally got like the results back, he was, he, this is like what he said. He's like, all right, guys, you know, I, I gave you a gift during this, you know, exam or test or whatever. I, you know, I, I heavily, I heavily curved the grade. So we, <laughs> so we all, like, even though I'm pretty sure we all failed, but you know, since he heavily, so heavily curved the heavily. grade. We we all like ended up passing with like I don't know probably probably like a like a B or a C or something crazy like that. I'm just like wow, I, I can't believe like I'm taking this class. I'm I can't literally believe not I'm here right anything. now. Yeah, what is it, my life? It, what it, it was what crazy. kind of math class was it? What Dude, kind of math I don't. Was it? I don't even remember. remember. I have no <laughs> idea. Did you learn anything? Was that a fever dream? <laughs> Did yeah, that actually that exist. I don't, I don't know. That that class, that class was crazy. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I had a lot of fun in that class because one, I just hate math, mm-hmm. and I'm horrible at it. So like, I, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty funny, but because <laughs> like we were just like prank calling people. That wears off, I'm sure. And... It's like, all right, how many people do have yeah. a prank call? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's not even yeah, fun it, anymore. It... <laughs> Make it stop. It, it was. It... It, it was pretty crazy and then there was this one other point where like one day the other teacher that was in there he was watching like some really like inappropriate movie it was uh, about like i think it was called kids or something okay. the movie was about like <laughs> these kids who like the you know are really i don't know i don't know but all i know about the movie is that the these like kids who are like 12 and 13 are like and stuff what? I, I I don't I don't know. Why is this a school thing? I don't. <laughs> but anyway, like an an admin who was like really high up, like people like if if she walks into your classroom, like you, you gotta like, you know, like n- no more BSing. You gotta like, you know, start teaching and shit. She's God she's forbid. like really high up. Like like she can get you fired probably. She walked in one time on our class while we were doing like like absolutely nothing and the one teacher the one teacher was just watching some movie about these like 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 kids in like some fucked up neighborhood and like she she had to like she told the one teacher that you know he couldn't come back into our math class anymore because he was like distracting he was distracting the other teacher who's actually supposed to be teaching us and it 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 was a whole ordeal you gotta watch this movie about 12 year olds fucking yeah. That's so terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, it it was crazy. <laughs> Man, meanwhile in math class. <laughs> yeah. Well, my my I high mean, school yeah. story is like a lot of like like I said like really high like highs and like a really low lows, and I hate giving out numbered scores, but for what there was that was good, I'd probably have to say six, but it didn't feel like that a lot of the time. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it mm-hmm. is, that's how it averages out, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Again, I hate number scores, but it's so like the ones in the tens kind of averaged out to a six. Yeah, pretty much. But like junior year specifically, like I hated. Like I just, I had like no motivation to do anything. All my classes were stupid. Like <laughs> I, it, just, it, it just was not good. A lot, a lot of like household issues too. On top of it all, uh, um, it doesn't make it easy at all band stuff it was great we played a legend of zelda show except it wasn't Hell labeled yeah. as such but the music was like totally it's like we had to tell the directors like oh uh, this is from a game called this he's like no it's not oh it totally is <laughs> i didn't believe you yeah i'll have to send you the video of that one too it's like totally blatant and it's great it was awesome we made like zelda themed like sweatshirts for ourselves and stuff. so that was like the highlight but 
man, like that year just sucked. Like I could barely even bring myself to get out of bed every morning, to be honest. Uh, then senior year, lots of ups and downs. Freshman and sophomore, pretty good. Pretty good overall, I'd say. And I was lucky enough to kind of carry over my friends from middle school. Uh, there was like a, some that like dropped off unfortunately but i i had like a really like core like tight group of friends so that i would never really struggled with and i just kind of like i didn't really make an effort to like really get to know a lot of people because 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 i i didn't want to say i was like condescending i just they were people i didn't necessarily want to take the time to interact with like they just were not the the right uh fit or not, not the kind of uh lifestyle i wanted to live um that sounds like really negative. I just didn't. I just didn't mesh with a lot of the people there. Yeah, um, it's just how it is. See, lots of. I mean, what was good was really good. What wasn't, really wasn't. Um, yeah, average out to a six. Would not take it again. Even though I wish I could go back and like do better in some of my classes. Like, I still. If I woke up, and I was in high school again, I'd probably kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Yeah, like. There, I just have so much freedom as an adult. Like, you know, I have a car, can go wherever I want. <laughs> car. I have a job, so I could buy whatever I want. Well, yeah, it's pretty cool. Know, in, mm. in theory, like in obviously, theory. I can't buy can't buy a new Lamborghini. <laughs> Not yet, unfortunately. I can't move to Alaska but, and live in my Wi-Fi cabin. Yeah. Nope. So, but, like, uh, what what was your yeah uh, college? What was your GPA in high school, like Noah? Since you're talking about how so, terrible you did, I didn't do that bad. So, like I averaged push. out to like a three point five. Oh, that's but, not bad at all. But that's not saying like fresh, freshman sophomore year, like I did great. There was just like a couple classes in junior senior year that brought me down. Like I flunked German, and it wasn't the class's fault. Like it, it was harder to fail that class than it was to pass. I just had a really <laughs> mischievous group of friends that I sat with, and we Aww. fucked off the whole time. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then my senior year, there was a math class I took. It was like it was like algebra. So it was like a high algebra or whatever, and I just I struggled so hard. Um, I actually like dropped it in junior year because I'm like I can't do this. I'm like I'll take it in senior year. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I I feel like I legitimately think the teacher pity passed me. Like oh, like because like I had like. I was like totally down to pass and like graduate except for this one class. And there's like, there's no way I got that score on the test on the last test mm -hmm. because I like, I like bombed each and every test, but like I made the effort and I like, I studied and I retook tests. And I just could not do it. And yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I could have not graduated. Had, I've definitely had teachers like that where I'm like, I'm just like, yeah, there's no way I actually passed this. Yeah. <laughs> But yet somehow I I graduated, so you know I don't know what what happened there. Yep. You know I I'd have to look in. I I think it was like around three point five. But okay. There's just like, like yeah, junior I... senior year. Like I really just like why am I here? Like I just really had was pretty apathetic toward the whole mm -hmm. thing. My my yeah. senior year um college English class was an absolute fucking train wreck. Oh God. Um, but it was really fun too at the same time like there was like it was like so shitty but like also had like some good times in it um basically the last month of school uh the teacher assigned us like a ton of shit to do and it was like an unrealistic amount of shit to do even for him and he was used to assigning a lot of stuff and he's like you know what guys we can't do this anymore like let's it's i'm dropping it like just make nice. your just make your portfolios like just you'll get the credit and like i'm sorry like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> like his normal like his normal like senior year english classes ran so smoothly but his college english class was an absolute like just it was like fallout um <laughs> yeah that's terrible man. but i also had like a lot of great people in that class so it was like that was like I could go from just absolutely despising it to being like, "This is this is great." Like, like I love what the, what we're learning, but man, I don't want to read Moby Dick in two days and then write a six page oh. paper. But that in two what, days. luckily that was that was like one of the things he dropped. So he's like, "Yeah, we ran out of time, so we really don't have any time to read this book, but we have to read this book." So here you go. Sorry, unabridged. Um, uh, got out of that luckily. Uh, man. 
trying to think. Yeah, so, that German so class was bad. Yeah. Like, I just felt embarrassed afterward. I'm just like, I'm sorry I wasted your time. Like, <laughs> I really feel bad about it. Um, trying to think. That's pretty much it. Just like a couple duds, and then just kind of. It was a rocky. It was not not pleasant. I did not have the ideal experience for sure, but could have been worse, I guess. Any yeah, uh, I mean, final. I'm I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I had a question. Yeah. What's the question? Do Do any of you guys have like, are any of you guys Facebook friends with any of your old teachers? I am. Oh yeah, Facebook, like all of them. Yeah, I'm Facebook friends with my former band director and my former uh, percussion instructor, if that counts. But that yeah, was like an extra thing. But he wasn't. Yeah, a I don't think yet. I. I have like one one teacher who I I recently sent a friend request to. She accepted me, <laughs> and like everyone else, just like eh. <laughs> My senior, yeah, really... go on. I I was just gonna say I don't really like have anyone else that I really felt the need to friend. My senior class is actually still in a chat with my. Uh, my math teacher, who is also our orchestra teacher, and today she sent us a Facebook message, and she was like, "I don't remember the name, but I found a game using a variety of dices, like an octahedron, tetrahedron, and icosahedron." And she's like, "I gotta get it," and I'm like, "You mean Dungeons and Dragons?" And she's like, "Yes." I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> <You mean. laughs> That's too funny. She know I'm like right like she has no freaking idea what that game is it's like there's a lot more than <laughs> just like a the way dice. of life right it's <laughs> really involved it took three hours for me to make my first character for christ's sake like not surprised <laughs> a lot of reading you have to buy like 17 books for the rules oh yeah it's ridiculousness they're all dedicated to different things, like one just for the monsters, one just for the weapons. Yeah, it's like you have to have the specific version too. You can't have like uh, different versions. You have to have fifth edition. Yeah, you know, just all that crap. Yeah, it's it's a commitment. Ugh. I don't. It's if I wasn't going to the on campus club, I don't know if it'd be it'd, it'd be too much to invest in. I think they yeah, they have all that crap though, so it's nice. I just had to buy dice. Mm -hmm. <sighs> anyway. Yeah, it's getting late. Yeah. So in that case, <laughs> it's time for I Recommend, where one of us recommends the group something for the others to check out. It can be anything. And last time, we recommended the 1922 silent horror classic Nosferatu by our own Emma Myers. Um, what did you guys think of it? It was very educational, in my opinion. Educational? Yeah, just from a production standpoint. Just like uh. how the soundtrack was implemented like how they have to use music to influence the tone yeah yeah i don't know i'm I... curious about what versions of the film you watched because there's like multiple versions so i watched the 1922 one yeah I... there's just different okay so uh... there's like there's like the original cut um where like when you guys were watching it, was it all in black and white or was it in like some were tinted blue, some were tilted like orange, some were tinted like red? Mine was the official like all black and white. It had to have been the My, original cut. The, okay. the one that I watched, it was like some orange. There was like some color, you know. Okay. Like... Yeah, um, the original cut is actually the one that has the tinted frames. Um, they use like the the tinted basically like if it was during a night the night time then everything would be tinted blue and if it was during like dusk or early evening it would be tinted red and then daytime would be tinted yellow um mm -hmm. that's like technically the official because i have that version and then i also own on dvd a version where it's black and white and they actually um changed all the names of the characters to be the names that are in Dracula, which like makes me mad personally. But I wouldn't like. Yeah, that. there's just yeah, it's just weird. It's not the same. Like, yeah, it's just not the same. But anyway, yeah, I was just wondering what version you guys actually ended up watching. I I feel like in hindsight it was black and white, but it was also like a week ago. 
it felt it didn't feel like edited in any other ways though i thought it was the yeah original. yeah it it probably was a lot of people find it really hard to watch like the tinted film which i totally get um but yeah the only version i've ever seen in black and white's the one where they change the names so yeah the names were definitely not changed so maybe it was the original and i just didn't remember the tint effect yeah, I don't know. in hindsight, it, it doesn't really matter. I was just curious. Yeah, no, that's important. Um, you know, I, I guess I didn't really enjoy watching it as much I, as I enjoyed having watched it, if that makes sense. Like, I thought it was a really, like, enriching experience, especially for someone who's interested in film. But I didn't really gain any entertainment value in it. Like, I didn't... Like, I found the score to kind of be kind of... Uh, I don't know, almost distracting. Like, it didn't really seem to fit the tone at all times. Yeah, like, I totally get that. Yeah, okay, so I'm not I'm not crazy. It's very, like, upbeat a lot of times. Yeah. And there's, like, a lot of, like, marimba, and it kind of sounds like RuneScape music almost. <laughs> like, I, I totally get what you're saying, because we had to watch that film for film class this week, actually, since it was Halloween, so all my friends were kind of forced to watch it too. And that was like their biggest issue with it as well was the soundtrack. I love the music, but it does not fit well. Like yeah, with the music the was great. I, yeah. I yeah. totally agree with you. Okay. That was my main criticism. Like the rest of it was just product of the times. I think they did. They did a lot of, I mean, they, they did the most that they could with what they had. Cause it was 1922. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about. A production of that of that magnitude just then like it must have been just a wild west first film adaptation of the vampire um people always compare uh Mornow's version of the vampire which is count orlock to bram stoker's adaptation more bella lugosi's portrayal of dracula in like the actual movie dracula because it's very different and Nosferatu, you know, the vampire is very creepy, definitely not romanticized, and um, is more of a monster. Whereas in Dracula, you know, he's, like, tall and handsome, you know, he has that, like, Italian accent. Um, he wears the suit and everything like that. Um, I've always liked the uh, portrayal of a vampire more of a monster, then, like, the romanticized, you know, kind of like Twilight, you know. Oh, vampires, you know, they're so hot and everything like that, so. Yeah, there's a happy medium. Uh, I, I, I definitely generally prefer, like, the more, like, fiendish, like, beast-like. But um, there's some, there's, like, some uh, franchises that do it well. Like, they have kind of, like, a mixture. Like, they have, like... Like in The Witcher, where it's like the like the oh, high yeah. level vampires, like they're like the very like regal, um, sophisticated, um, human like ones. But then there's also like the lower like rung ones that are like very beast like. So I kind of like, like kind of like a mix. But generally, if I have to pick one, I definitely like the more sc like the scarier, more fiendish ones. I hate I hate the Twilight type shit like so much. Yeah. But. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Um, any, like, what was, like, what is, like, your favorite moment in it, Emma? Because, like, for me, like, the the whole, like, I, the iconic shock that I think of before I saw it, like, it happened pretty early on, like, with him in the doorway. Like, it, hap uh -huh. it happened pretty early. The scene from SpongeBob. Yeah, the scene from SpongeBob, unabashedly. One of my favorite scenes, I really like the scene um, on the ship. Uh, I really mm. like some of the things they, some camera tricks they do. Like when you see him, like just rise up from his coffin. Yeah. Uh, and that it's was just cool. like completely, he's completely straight. I love that shot. Um, I love just him coming up from the ship and everything. Um, Cause I think it's really, it's so like, cause at that point, there's like two sailors left alive. And it's just, like, this sense of complete and, sh like, sheer terror and helplessness. Like, they can't do anything. 
Yeah, um, you're trapped. Like, and it's just, it's very tense, right? You're just watching this, like, insanely creepy dude. He's unsettling. Just, like, he's really the, unsettling a lot of the time. And the way he moves, like, he doesn't really bend his body at all. And he just walks, like, very odd. It's just very creepy and unsettling, yeah. But I really like it. No, it was good. I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you recommended it to us. Glad I watched it. Um, I'm gonna be curious to go back and see if it was tinted. Now that I knew that that is the original cut, <laughs> I just genuinely cannot remember. Any final thoughts on Nosferatu, our little Halloween spooky special? Uh, yeah. So, me personally, you know, I'm not not really much of a uh, like a movie guy. So when you said silent film. I wasn't expecting, you know, there to be like music in it. I, I thought like the whole thing was gonna be silent. Uh, going into it, that's one thing that surprised me. I guess another thing that I thought was interesting, you know, because I've never really watched silent movie before, is like I never understood like really like how anyone knew what was going on if. You know, no one was talking, but then, you know, I saw from the movie that, you know, like during certain scenes that there would be like text up on the screen. So it basically like tells you, you know, what, what they're saying, what's going on. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but overall, like, uh, it, it, it was interesting seeing the movie. It was an interesting experience. It's, it's not, it's not really for me though. Like, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, it's it's not not something I would voluntarily watch, and you know I'm I'm just kind of curious like, what why why do you like this movie? Because I I don't I don't really understand like what like what's so what's so good about it. See, for me, um, I really like silent films in general. Um, I can't really tell you why. I just think it's like it's like this lost art form almost like mm -hmm. that's like what movies were like we're so spoiled now we have these like movies that have like millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of budget and like i love going back and watching silent films and because like you said when you're not when there's no dialogue it's, you know, you would think it would be harder to understand what's going on and stuff, but I think it really shows, like, how good the actors are or were back then. I mean, to be able to, like, over-exaggerate things and um, act out what's happening without, peop without speaking, I think is incredibly difficult. And I've always just been um, fascinated by that kind of stuff. It's like other really good silent film films I enjoy are like Metropolis, which is like one of the first like sci-fi films. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is really good. Um, I really like the creepy aesthetic of them too. I think every silent film kind of has a creepy aesthetic to it. Um, and I just love that kind of stuff. Nosferatu specifically, it was the first silent film I ever watched. Uh, I watched it for the first time when I was in eighth grade. And so, you know, do I think it's a flawless movie? No. <laughs> and I totally get how it's, like, not for certain. Like, certain people just don't like silent films. Or certain people just don't like that movie in general. And I totally get that. Um, a lot of it for me is nostalgia. But also, I just love, um, I just love that, like I was saying before, that portrayal of a vampire um, and how, like, unsettling he is to look at and especially to watch, um, like, the whole scene okay. when Hutter cuts his thumb and then, you know, the vampire, like, stands up and, like, corners him or even, you know, in the SpongeBob scene where he's just walking down the hallway and there's that sense of like utter helplessness. I just like I just like how it's portrayed in that movie specifically. Um, 
and we had to watch Dracula for film today too. And it's interesting watching Nosferatu and then watching Dracula right after it because they're obviously based on the same thing, but um, they're both so different but so alike. And it's just really cool to see that kind of stuff. And I also love the history behind the movie itself, how it was total like, um, oh, what's the, what's the phrase for it? They did not get the rights to Dracula when they made this movie. Um, it was very, they made it illegally, basically. And the Stoker family actually sued more now. And the court actually ordered that every... Um, so the word you're looking for, plagiarized? Yeah, or unauthorized adaptation, I okay. guess. Okay. Um, they weren't authorized to use Dracula. Yeah. Uh, which is why they changed all the names. Um, that was kind of a loophole. But the court ruled in the Stoker's favor. And it was actually ordered that... Uh, every copy of the film get destroyed. Well, you know, oh. obviously some of it survived, at least Luckily. one yeah. copy. Luckily. Um, well, I mean, once that's out there, it's, it's like almost impossible to destroy every single copy. Somebody's going to like burn it or whatever. Oh, yeah. I just love that film was like the first, not the first. It was like one of the very first horror movies in general, not just vampire films. And I just love seeing um, how films, even today, like look back on it and pay homage to it. It's just, it's like an, an, an ancient relic almost. And I think it's just one of those films, like, if you're, like, super into film, you should definitely watch this movie. Definitely. Um, s- just some of the uh, camera angles they use um, are really good. I mean, they had, you know, a uh, tracking camera in some of the scenes, which was, like, unheard of back then. You know, it was just one of those um, groundbreaking early films of cinema. But I think it's just really important, you know, if you're super into film, you should definitely, definitely check it out. It's not that long. It's like an hour and a half, you know. Culture yourself. Get some culture. So, even though Halloween has come and gone at this point, we're going to continue the vampire train a little bit. So, this week... I am recommending Adi Shankar's Castlevania on Netflix. It is a four-part animated series as of now that is based off Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse specifically. It has a great cast. It has uh, Richard Armitage as Trevor Belmont and Graham McTavish as Dracula, who is a uh, cutter in Uncharted 3. You might know him. Um, probably one of my favorite portrayals of Dracula just in any adaptation. Like He's just truly evil, but also has like some like humanity to him. You don't see him that much, but what what you do see and how he's portrayed, like it's really interesting. And I'd be curious to see how you think because he's he is very regal, but also just very menacing and uh, monster esque. So um, I think it might be the best video game op- adaptation of all time because it takes like the skeleton of the story, which was very bare bones, and fleshes it out to just a, an incredible degree, in my opinion. And which I think is how gaming a- adaptations should go. It should take the source material and flesh it out and fill in the gaps. Um, especially for something as old as Castlevania 3, which is an NES game. NES game, excuse me. So go check that out. It's re- it's really small. Like the, the episodes are like 20 minutes long. So like it's like it's movie size basically. And season 2 should be out next year. My biggest issue with it is how short it is, but that'll make it easier to digest for the show. And then this has been episode 14 of Grid Life Digest. Thank you so much for listening. You can head over to gridlifedigest.com to see everything we post and consider subscribing on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube so you never miss a single topic. We'll be back next Wednesday with another conversation. Ran a little long, got a little very in deep in depth. I can't even speak. That's how late it is. I'm just going to go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was a good one. Bye. Don't do heroin. Don't do heroin. Also, we might have a guest. Oh. Next episode. Little teaser. When I have a guest, guest, I can't talk.